Alrighty then, let's see. All right, we are live. Now guys, don't forget, we have about a 20 second delay, I believe. Maybe less than 20 seconds and then I lost this guy. Oh boy, this guy is such a dude, man. Oh boy. All right, guys, if you just want to know, I, I love Osama Dakdo. He's a warrior for Jesus Christ. He's on fire for Jesus. He loves the Lord Jesus Christ. And we praise Jesus Christ for this man. But let me be honest with you. This man sucks when it comes to computers and figuring out computers. I thought I was bad. I really thought I was bad when it came to computers because I'm illiterate when it comes to <clears throat> working computers and I'm just technically illiterate. This guy makes me look like I'm a genius when it comes to computers. When it comes to computers and YouTube, this dude makes me look like a genius. There hasn't been a time where he hasn't come on my channel and he hasn't had computer problems. And right now we thought we solved the problem, but he just, Knocked himself out of StreamYard, my friend. All right, buddy. Are, are you okay now? I heard everything you said about me. Thank you so much. No, I'm just saying, dude. I mean, I thought I stunk. I sucked when it comes to it. Man, you make me look like I'm a computer genius, baby. <laughs> now, do I'm you got your other connection on? I think we're good. Uh, let me close. I don't see. Minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Invite people, folks. This is the time to invite people. Let's make this live session go viral for the glory of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you. Take over the session. Bless Usama. Magnify the name of the Son of God, the Father, our God and Savior, Lord Jesus. And Holy Spirit, bless the internet connection. Anoint our words. Save us from error. Fill us with passion for Jesus to destroy the lives of these Mohammedans. Shame them for their lies and blasphemies and take them captive and bring them to the feet of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we love you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Okay, now, okay, now there's you, nothing on your screen, by you, the way. Can, what? Do you see it? There's nothing on your screen. screen. Uh, I have my PowerPoint open. Can you see it or not? Oh, do you see on the screen there's nothing? Hold on. Hold on. Let me share something. Everyone and welcome back. Get out, son. You got it on. Welcome back. The other I'm thing, sorry, what? Okay, you're playing him. Or you want to start from the beginning so I can pull back? Yes, that, that is the beginning. That is the beginning of our video. Only problem is you don't see your slides. Where are your slides? Okay, I can uh, skip it and make it like oh, this. There it goes. All right, okay. You, I'm going to let you take over now. You ready? All right. Just sit with me for a few minutes and tell me sure that everything is working right before okay. you head away. Go ahead. Good. All right, here is the story. Hello, my dear friends. Good to see all of you. Praise God uh, for this uh, wonderful two hours. We pray that the Lord will uh, take care of all the problems of the technology, which I do not know too much about. And uh, it just happened uh, three days ago, four days ago, my beloved wife said, hey, there's an email to you from a uh, Muslim guy who uh, actually also I got this from my producer, uh, Christy Johnson, who uh, does my uh, Facebook, a guy, uh, Mohammedans, uh, put a video about uh, the false translation uh, of Quran 931. And I said, sure, I would love to see it. My wife said he would like to uh, uh, debate you. I said, I would love to debate him. But you know what? I decided, you know what? Here's the truth. We're going to share it what it is. Hopefully, hopefully he can see it himself and he can learn something from what I'm about to share with you. Uh, I love uh, Muslims with their passion, but I don't like them when they're deceiver. I don't like them when they know that there's something wrong and they just cover it up. Or uh, if they pretend there's nothing wrong. I, and I say it, and I'll repeat again myself, Muslims are two. Those who are deceived and those who are deceiver. Uh, so far, I believe this brother is a deceived, but perhaps he's a deceiver. We'll find out, obviously, if we ever have him for a debate. So anyway, so what I decided to do is I got his video. I cut it to small but bites so we can re re rebuttal it. Uh, I did not edit any of his videos. Uh, when you see where I stopped, is where I catch up. So I just cut it to pieces. So instead of I play for you 13, 14 minutes and I respond to it and you're not following me, I make him say something, I stop him, I rebuttal it, and move on to the next piece. Are we doing so far so good, Sam? 
Sam. If I have to say yes, you know I'm going to block you. Yes, keep going. All right. Sam. Good, good, good. Praise God. So here's the first piece out of his video, and we'll start from here. Assalamualaikum, everyone, and welcome back. The other day, I had a Christian gentleman. Whoa, 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 whoa. What, what did he say? I, I, I want to play it again one more time. It's very important to know that uh, this gentleman is making a very powerful statement. He said, what? Listen carefully. Listen carefully, please. Assalamualaikum, everyone, and welcome back. Assalamu alaikum, everyone, and welcome back. Well, it, it shocked me when he talked to a Muslim scholar, a man with a big beard, with a hat, he's, he's really covering all uh, all basics of Islam, to start his video by saying, Assalamu alaikum. Well, does he know who he's talking to? I mean, he's talking to me, an infidel, a Christian. He's talking to Sam Shimon. He's talking to lots of Jews and lots of Christians. And he opening his video by saying, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. He should say, Assalamu ala man attaba al huda. The peace be on those who follow the guidance. The peace is only be to be given, initiated to the Muslims, not everybody. Come on, brother. Are you practicing taqiyya on us here? Quran 328, peace with your tongue, not with your heart. Let, let, me, let me share with you a very important verse here, uh, a statement actually from Muhammad in the hadith. Muhammad said, do not. You know what do not means? It means don't. Okay. Do not initiate the peace to the Jews and the Christians. And if you meet any of them in a road, force them to its narrowest valley. Uh, be bully. Start the fight. Start the war against the Jews and the Christians. And I'm shocked. And I need you to be very careful when you talk to Muslims, when they start by saying, Salaamu Alaikum, the peace of Allah be on you. Say, stop. Excuse me here. Are you practicing taqiyya or you are a, a real Muslim? If you are a real Muslim, you should never say assalamu alaikum to an infidel like myself. So anyway, let's go ahead to we'll start this video one more time to see what did he exactly say. Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome back. The other day I had a Christian gentleman come up to me and tell me that the Quran itself commands us to worship God and Jesus. I said, what? And he said, the Quran itself tells you to worship God and Jesus. And he had a smirk on his face. And I thought, well, this is going to be interesting. So show me where in the Quran it says that. So he showed me chapter 9, verse 31. Chapter 9 is Surah Tawbah. And in verse 31, it's basically criticizing the Jews and Christians for engaging in false worship. And the verse says, they, meaning the Jews and or the Christians, they took their priests and their monks as lords rather than God and the Christ. I'll repeat that. They took their priests and their monks as lords besides God or rather than God and the Christ. So upon that English reading, upon that English translation of the Quran, it definitely sounds as if the Quran is saying that the Jews and the Christians are supposed to be worshipping God and Jesus. But instead of worshiping God and Jesus, they took their priests and their monks as gods, or they gave them too much authority, more than they should have. All right. Uh, I mean, first of all, talk about, he's copying this from my book, by the way. This is my own book writing in the Genesis Quran. Well, he's going to say that a little bit later. Uh, to understand verse 31, we really need to look at verse 30, and I'm so thankful that he put 30 and 31 together on his uh, video. First of all, and the Jews said, Ezra is the son of Allah. And the Nasara, the Christians, said, the Christ is the son of Allah. This is their saying with their mouth. They repeat the saying of those who became infidels before Allah engages in war against them. How perverted they are. That is Quran chapter 9, verse 30. From reading that verse, I know for sure, without any doubt, not only the Muslim believers, but Allah himself and Jibreel himself and Muhammad himself have no clue what Christians believe. And they have no clue what the Jewish believe. They have no clue about the history of mankind and believes in this world. It, it just, it just follow me step by step. We're not, we're going to have a good couple hours. We'll cover this video in depth and we'll give you plenty of material. But when Allah said in the Quran, the Jews said, Ezra is the son of Allah. Well, I challenge Allah, I challenge Jibreel, I challenge Muhammad, I challenge all the Muslim in planet Earth, including that brother who did this video, to show me one source beside 930, 
where the Jewish people said that Ezra is the son of Allah. Or the Jewish people believe that Ezra is the son of Allah. As a matter of fact, the moment a Jew believes somebody is the son of Allah, that person, that person is no longer a Muslim. I'm sorry, is no longer a Jew. Judaism does not believe in son of Allah or son of God of any type of shape or form. The Jewish people never believe, worship, uh, except Ezra to be a son of Allah. As a matter of fact, the Jewish people never believe in Allah. So if you don't believe in Allah, how can you believe in his son? That's a problem, my friend. Muhammad does not know what he's talking about because Allah and Jibreel did not give him the right information. Let's continue. The Nasara, the Christian, said that Christ is the son of Allah. No, we don't say. We believe. It's a fact. 100%. You cannot be a Christian unless you believe Jesus is God Almighty. He came in the flesh. He is the son of God. Not Allah. God. It's a little bit confusion. For the people of the West to hear Muslim use the word God for Allah. No, Allah is Satan. We're going to talk about that in another meeting coming up soon, Lord's willing. But God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And Jesus, the word of God, became flesh, is the Son of God, and he is God. Because he came from the Father. All right? Now, he said, this is their saying with their mouth. They is plural. Wrong. Why? Because the Jew never believed neither in Ezra or anybody to be the son of Allah. Only the Christian believes that Jesus is the son of God. And listen to this. They repeat the saying of those who become infidels before. Excuse me. Once again, I challenge Allah, I challenge Jibreel, I challenge Muhammad and all Muslim believers to show us where else beside Quran chapter 9 verse 30 that some infidels who came before the Jews or came before the Christians whoever believed that Allah has a son. I mean, this is a saying of previous people. Many infidels before that. Only Christianity, and it is the only faith on this planet who believes that God, the word became flesh, and Jesus is the son of God. That is itself is a problem. I don't know why he skipped that verse since he have it on the screen, but I think it to be fair to understand Quran chapter 9, verse 31. Let's read Quran chapter 9, verse 30 to see the context in these two verses according to the word of Allah. Now, Quran chapter 9 and verse 31. They take their rabbis and their monks as lords rather than Allah, not beside Allah, or uh, with Allah, as some Muslims lie in the translation, rather, mindun, without, rather than. You get rid of Allah, we're going to replace him by the, the priest and the, the rabbi and the monks. Now, and then he said, and uh, rather than Allah and the Christ, son of Mary. And he's telling me that this translation is not accurate. In similar words, the Jews and the Christians, those who believe in Ezra to be the son of Allah, and those who believe Jesus is the son of Allah, those who are copying previous infidels who came before us in years and years, we don't know who they are. They are taking the rabbis and the monks as lords, as gods, instead of Allah and the Christ, son of Mary. This is the accurate English translation, and we're going to prove it as we continue in our study so let's move on to the next part of his teaching this mr uh, muhammad so i asked this christian gentleman can i see who's done this translation and the translation was done by a coptic egyptian american christian named Usama Dakdok. Now, in this English translation of his, he hasn't included the original Arabic Quran. Well, 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 well why do we need the Arabic Quran? I know how Muslims sometimes say, you need to have the Arabic this language English so we can expose your lies. Excuse me. We don't live here in uh, in the West, those who speak English, uh, behind some camels. We no longer drink camel urine. We are a little bit modern than those. So if you get the English and you think there's something wrong, you can always go online and download the Arabic. What is the point for making my book instead of 400 pages to 800 pages? Will this add any value? It is the English translation of the Quran. I don't need the Arabic. Okay? The people of the West who cannot read Arabic and 87% of the Muslims who cannot read Arabic, they just need to read it in some other language, perhaps in his own tongue, Urdu, or whatever language he speaks. I believe he's a, 
he's a Pakistani Muslim, or just reading English. Since we all in America speak English and we all read English, we do not need the Arabic to oh to capture his lies. You some his lying. He's not faithful in the Arabic to the English. Really, I'm not faithful in my translation. Ladies and gentlemen, this translation has been out now since 1990. Uh, 90, I'm sorry, uh, 2001, 2001. I apologize. So it's. it's uh, I have to get a copy to tell you exactly the date. It's been it's been out there for a long time. I worked on it for four years, and we published it. And by the way, before even I I, I was working it, the Muslims all over the world knows about it. I need to go 2000, uh, 2011, I believe. It is a good thirteen years ago when I started work. Fourteen years ago, it's over ten years in 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 simple answer. Anyway, and the Muslims have it. He himself have it. He's going to show it right now, uh, the back of my cover. He have it. And I have been challenging the Muslims, not just in America, but all over the world, those who speak English and know Arabic, for a debate for all these years. And nobody ever talked about it. And he himself picked up that one verse, 931, to talk about my translation, leaving a good nine chapters before that. Man, you should start with Quran chapter 1, verse 1, where I say Allah is Satan. I think that's more powerful than that verse you're quoting from the Quran. But that's okay. Why the world Muslims? Why the world Muslims waited all these years to come to talk about Macron in any way, shape, or form? Thank God it's there. It's not in Arabic because if you know Arabic, you don't need my English. Trust me. And if you know Arabic and English, you know for sure my translation is accurate. Let's continue with his teaching. This is clearly, clearly a purposeful mistranslation of the Quran. When you look at Usama Dakdok's translation of the Quran, which he's named the generous Quran, on the back of the book, as you can see here, he says that Arabic is his first language. Now, Arabic is not my first language. Arabic is not the first language of most Muslims. But even the basic grasp that I have of Quranic Arabic tells me that his translation is way off. Now, before I even get into the Arabic grammar of my argument. Oh, I'm glad he's going to talk about grammar because believe it or not, I got a few uh, examples of many of grammatic errors in the Quran, which I would like to share with you. But he said, I named my translation the generous quran excuse me that is the name allah gave to your quran you know that with all these 30 or 40 english translations of the quran not one of them but the right title on the book some call it the holy quran some call it the final quran some call it the final revelation some call it the uh, glorious quran some call i mean a bunch of names the final testament uh, propaganda names Al-Quran Al-Karim in the Arabic language translated to the English language, the generous Quran. So that is the only accurate translation. Now, when he says he's going to get to the grammar, it's like, are you assuming, let me just give you clearly, are you assuming that the Quran is free of er grammatic errors? My friends, we can actually, we can actually spend the next, no kidding, the next two hours to cover the grammatic error of the Quran and not all of it, some of it. But for the sake of time, I'm going to share with you just few, just few. For example, in the Quran, the, uh, chapter 2, verse 124, of course, the English in many of these verses, you're not going to see the error. Some will see, but in Arabic Quran, the Quran, which I did not put in my English translation, it says, La yanalu ahdi Huh? My covenant will not be received by the unjust. In English, it's good English, no good grammar, no problem. But in the grammar in the Arabic language, the word azalimin is a boo boo. Muhammad made a mistake. Why? Because it's supposed to be azalimun. Layanal ahdi azalimun, not azalimin. So in the next 10, 15 minutes here, I'm sorry, maybe 10 minutes or so, uh, those who does not speak Arabic have do have no clue. What I'm talking about now, that gentleman confessed he does not Arabic is, is not his first language. And I wonder if the examples I'm going to share with you with grammatic error in the Quran, he will have the answer for. Because guess what? Some of the Muslim scholars left Islam. That I'm talking about Arabic teachers, those who teach grammar, left Islam because of these errors. But he is a Pakistani Muslim, and I'm guessing he's a Pakistani. He has no clue that these are errors because he, I believe, deceived by those who taught him Islam that the Quran is pure Arabic, perfect grammar, as he's going to share with us a little bit himself. So, 
هنا في هذه الآية نص نص بالفعل فكان يفترض به أن يقول الظالمون وليس الظالمين. He must say الظالمون not الظالمين. Now, as I shared with you before, I believe one one of our study in the Arabic language is different than English or maybe Urdu. This word feminine words, this word masculine words, and if you use the word إن إن the اسم إن the name of إن must match خبر إن which is uh, what is uh, the uh, the the name of in is about uh, the conclusion of what is this to cover what in rahmatullahi qareeb min al muhsinin this is quran chapter 7 and verse 56 surely the mercy of allah is near the doers of good now the word near in the arabic language is qareeb now rahmat is a feminine feminine word now khabar in which is the word qareeb, must match the word rahmat. So if rahmat is feminine, mu'annasa, the word qareeb must be also feminine, mu'annasa. So the right way to read that verse, it is, inna rahmatullahi qareeb min al muhsinin. Not qareeb. Qareeb is a bad word. Here's another error, grammatic error in the Quran. Let's move on for the sake of time. Talking about a big mistake in Quran chapter 7, verse 116. Of course, once again, you read in English, it's not so long as it. وَقَطَعْنَاهُمْ إِسْنَتَيْ عَشْرَ أَصْبَاطًا أُمَمًا And we divided them into 12 tribes, nations. First of all, the word nations is, not, is nonsense. They are one nation, the, the, the Jewish nation, the children of Israel. There are 12 tribes. We don't need the word nations next to the word tribe. But that's not the issue here. The, the mistake here, he's supposed to say, Isnata Isnayash Subtan, not Isnatayash Asbatan. We have two mistakes here. Isnatay here supposed to be Isnay. The word Asbatan, which is plural, is supposed to be Subtan. So it will be read. Uh, we divided them into 12 tribes. End the story. 12 tribes. Uh, this is a mistake by Allah and Muhammad in the Quran. That is grammatic error. Let's move on. The Quran chapter 22 verse 19. Now, khisman is the damir which aid ala the word hazan. Hazan khisman. Uh -huh. Now, if you want to put uh, uh, the word ikhtasamu, in the right grammatic in the Arabic, ikhtasama khisman is dual, ikhtasama is dual, not ikhtasamu plural. That's a bad mistake. My friends, if I am in my Arabic grammar class and I put any of these mistakes I'm sharing with you with my teacher in Egypt, I got 30 some years ago, he will ask me to stand up and open my hand and he will hit me twice on each hand with a stick because that's grammatic error in the Quran. Unless I am quoting the Quran. If I quote the Quran, the verse is nothing wrong with the verse, and the teacher will be very happy to give me an A. Now, if I'm making my own uh, my, my my own writings, and I put this is ikhtasamu instead of ikhtasama, trust me, there'll be a nice letter F, which means fail, failing, and then I get a couple of spank on my hand. The grammar of the Arabic language in Islam is built on the Quran, not the Quran on the Arabic language. So it doesn't matter what Allah said in the Quran. If it is error, it is the right one. But if you go outside the Quran, you make the same mistake, it's the wrong one, the wrong grammar. But the problem is not just this. Sometimes in the Quran, Allah will put both ways. And we're going to give you some example for that. The right way and the wrong way. And then we ask uh, the good Muslim scholars, which one is the right way? Inna sabi'in or inna sabi'un? Which one is the right one? Because then we have a problem. Because you got it both ways. You cannot have it both ways. Type. Uh, another error here, وَخُطُّمْ كَالَّذِي خَادُوا خُطُّمْ is plural. كَالَّذِي is singular. خَادُوا is plural. No. كَالَّذِي is singular. Suppose خَادَ أو كَالَّذِينَ خَادُوا You cannot have plural, singular, plural. خُطُّمْ engaged in, uh, and, and you engaged like he who engaged. He who here is singular. No, we suppose to put it right like those who engaged. So, Kalazi is singular. That's a bad English. 
Why? Because Ism al-Muasal Ayat ala Dhamir Jam Yaqud Khutum Kalazina Khadu Walaysa Kalazi Khada. So that's a bad grammar in the Quran, the word of Allah. Mislam Kamasri Lazi is Tawqad and Narf Allah Ma'adat Min Hawli Zahab Allah bi Nuri Him. Is Tawqad Zahab Allah bi Nuri. Is Tawqad is singular and Nuri must be singular, not Nuri Him plural. Bad grammar. So, my dear Muslim friend, think about all these errors I'm sharing with you. And you think you're going to teach us about the grammar of the word of Allah in the Quran? I mean, I have one error. No, here, one go. Here, one more, one more here. لكن الرسخون في العلم منهم والمؤمنون يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك والمقيمين الصلاة والمؤتون الزكاة. مقيمين الصلاة. والمؤتون الزكاة. Don't you think it should be saying والمقيمون الصلاة. Not المقيمين. To match. مؤتون. مقيمون. مؤتون. Not مقيمين. مؤتون. How are you going to fix this grammatic error of the Quran? There's no fixing. I'm sorry to say, there is no fixing. It is the word of Allah. We have not been started yet, our study for today. Listen to that verse. That's amazing. That's Quran chapter 2 and verse 177. It says, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُّهُكُمْ قَبْلَ الْمَشْرِقُ الْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ الْبِرَّ <laughs> it's supposed to say in English it says it is not righteousness that you turn your face towards the east or the west but righteousness is to who have believed in Allah righteous is who have believed in Allah or righteousness to believe in Allah what what righteous a person have to do to be Believe in Allah or, or righteous man amin billah who believe in Allah. No, righteous is to believe in Allah. That is better grammar, better understanding to the word of Allah. Muhammad made another error. Walakin al bir and to amir billah. Righteousness is to believe in Allah, not who believe in Allah. Let's continue. Nine. In the Masal Isa and Allah came as Adam Khalaka Mun Turab Sama Kalah Kun Fayakun. Allah Amran, chapter three and verse fifty-nine. Surely the example of Esau with Allah is like the example of Adam. He, he created him from dust. Then he said to him, be, so he will be. The right Arabic grammar, قَالَ لَا كُنْ فَكَانْ Past tense, because guess what? Adam was created 6,000 years ago. According to that verse, we're still waiting for Adam to be created. فَكُنْ In the future, not in the past. فَكَانَ That's a big problem. Big problem in the Quran. Uh, and by the way, the whole verse is wrong because there is no re reality, there is no connection between how Allah created Isa and how Jesus, the one who created Isa. See, most of things that Allah created Isa like Allah created, you know, uh, Isa have a mother. Adam did not have neither a father nor a mother. But listen to the verse. He said, The example of Isa with Allah is like the example of Adam. How? He created him from dust. Okay, we know, we all know Adam was created from dust. Was Isa created from dust? Did Allah breathe dust into the private part of Virgin Mary? Or breathe the spirit, which came from heaven? Now that, see, the, the comparison doesn't exist. Adam was created from dust. Isa was not from dust. Now, did Allah say to Adam, be, and he was? Or did Allah fashion Adam by his hand and breathe the breath of life in his notches? See, that's a problem. When Muhammad said words in the Quran, and that is why we have a problem with Quran chapter 9 and verse 31, Muhammad just repeat words. Uh, Muhammad just uh, put words together to make a sentence. He's worried about the uh, poetry uh, rhythms in the sentence, not the message, not the subject. That's why Muhammad get in many troubles with his writing. So, so he will be, that's a bad grammar, but so he was. That'll be a better English. All right. And by the way, when my Editors working my book says, you saw me. There's something wrong here. I said, what? You said, so he will be. So I said, what's wrong? He said, you need to say, so he was. I said, no, leave it alone. See, he will be. Why? Because that is what Allah said in the Arabic. The problem is not in you. Some attack the translation. The problem is in Allah's writing of the Quran. We just translate. We don't fabricate like Muslims do in their translation. We're perfectly 100% right. And if 
some Muslims find an error and can convince me it's an error. Hey, we make second edition, third edition, and we will correct it. I promise you, mommy, my dear Muslim friend. If if you find an error in my flesh, I'll be so happy to correct it in my next brand. But so far, so good. Nobody has shared share with me an error. But uh, error number eleven. Allah lazi anzal al kitab al haq wal mizan wa madrik al al saa qarib. That is Quran chapter forty two verse seventeen. Laalla asa perhaps I love how Allah used the word perhaps. No perhaps was my God. The God of the Bible never used the word perhaps. Allah used perhaps because Allah does not know. Okay, maybe yes, maybe no, but Allah does not know. Now, asa muannasa is a feminine word. Qarib muzakkar masculine word that does not work. Sa qarib. So with the right English grammar, right Arabic grammar is to say asa. Qaribah, not Qarib. That's another error in the Quran. Okay. Wallahu wa Rasulu wa Haqqan Yardu, chapter 9, verse 62. Same chapter we have, verse 31. A little bit down there, so 62. It says, Allah and His Messenger are more worthy that they should please Him. No, 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 that's a bad word here. Bad grammar. It's not supposed to be Him, but it's supposed to be Zim. Why? Because we're talking about dual. Allah and His Messenger. Allah wa Rasuli yardu huma, not yardu. You mean you're gonna please Allah? You're not gonna please Muhammad, or you're gonna please Muhammad? You're not gonna please Allah. You have to please both. And since there are two pronoun here, Allah and Muhammad, you have to say yardu huma, please them, not him. That's obviously an error. You can see it in the English language for those who do not know Arabic. It is it, this one will blow your mind. Imagine with me in. Uh, in, in Surah Al Ghashiyah, Ayah 22, it says, The word Musaitr is to be in control or to be in charge, or to, you know, that's what the word Musaitr It is written, <laughs> This is written bad, bad, not just grammar, even alphabet wrong. Why? Because the word Musaitr is mean seen. You see the letter Saad here? That is a boo-boo. It's supposed to be seen. It's like writing a letter by the letter S instead of the letter C. If you have a word in the English language, supposed to be written by the letter S, and you make a mistake, you write it by the letter C. No, it does not work that way. You have to write the word in the right Arabic. So obviously, uh, Muhammad, is his great Muslim scholar, our dear friend here, does not know the difference between seen and sod, like somebody who does not know English and write a word in English. And say, if you use the letter C, write the letter S, and, um, you know, hey, we all make mistakes in a language we do not know. But that's the Quran, supposed to be the perfect word of law in the Arabic language. By the way, by the way, the Quran is loaded, 279 words, foreign words. So when Muslims come to you and say the Quran is pure Arabic, clear, easy to understand, tell them all. When you read you some adapt the translation, you will be shocked to find that there are 279 words all over the Quran. Some of these words written over 100 times, and they are not Arabic words. They are foreign words. Hebrew, Greek, uh, Aramaic, uh, Coptic, Latin. Who knows? Oh, wait. Just go in the back of my Quran. There is a, 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 a like a few pages there, but all these words, words that exist in the Quran and the original language of all these words. Now, here's the one we have a problem in the Quran because Allah uses it both ways. In Quran chapter 5, verse 69, in Lazina Amanu Lazina had wasabiun. In the book of Cal, chapter 2, verse 62, wasabiin. Now, my question to my dear Muslim friends and our brother here who is going to teach us about the grammar of the Quran, is it Sabi'un or is it Sabi'in? You cannot have it both ways. So, the right way is a Sabi'in or a Sabi'un. And the best way is just compare Quran chapter 5 verse 69 with Quran chapter 2 verse 62 or Surah Al-Hajj, uh, which is Quran chapter 22 and verse 17. Since the Quran uses the same word in different grammar, different way. That's no, no, no. Of course, Muslims may create some uh, good uh, abrogation to say, uh, you misunderstand, that's not what it says. Uh, and, and, and they make up, I'm telling you, Muslims make grammar according to the Quran, not the Quran as a language according to the grammar. Okay? So forget about what is the grammar we have in the Arabic. Uh, if it isn't the Quran, it's, it's correct. If it's said by Usama or someone, somebody, it's not correct. Okay? 
But what about this verse, for example, Sabi'in, Sabi'un, where Allah uses both ways in the Arabic Quran? Let's move on with the next video of our friends here. And I don't know if Sam is back. If he's back, I would really would like you to join me, Sam, in my talk. So feel free if you are back to join me in my talk. Otherwise, I'll just continue by myself. And I'll take the show, the whole show by myself. Here we go. Let me just say that even common sense will take us where we need to get to. How is it possible, just using common sense, how is it possible that the Quran, a book which criticizes Christians for worshiping Jesus, how can that same book be then telling you elsewhere that the Christians are supposed to be worshiping God and Jesus? Wow! Common sense, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. How can the Quran contradict itself? In one place in the Quran, he said, Jews and Christians don't worship Ezra, don't worship Jesus. Another place, oh, worship Jesus. This is impossible. Common sense. Are you assuming, my dear friend, that the Quran does not have contradictions? <laughs> like you assumed earlier, that there's no error, grammatic errors in the Quran. And there are plenty. I'm telling you, we can go for another two hours to show you errors in the grammar of the Quran, the Arabic Quran. Now, let's move on with our, in our study to uh, to see why, how in the world, common sense, how does this happen? For example, in Quran chapter 3, verse 34, 11, 34, it says, And my advice will not uh, profit you if I desire to uh, uh, advise you. If Allah was desiring to seduce you, he is your Lord, and to him you will return. Maybe, maybe, my dear Muslim imam, maybe Allah is using the Quran to seduce us, confuse us, uh, 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 trick us. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what Allah did in the Quran. If you go with me to Quran chapter 15, verse 39, by the way, here was Noah talking to the, his people. If I would give you advice, if I would, uh, it doesn't matter because if Allah chooses to seduce you, he's going to seduce you anyway. He's going to lead you astray anyway. Okay, now, Quran chapter 15, verse 39, he said, that is Satan. My Lord, <laughs> Satan believed Allah is his Lord. Because you seduced me, I will surely adorn to them on earth, and I will surely seduce all of them. Which, by the way, contradict Quran chapter 38, verses 82 and 3, where he said what? Except your faithful servants among them. He will not seduce all the people on earth. He only seduce the one who will not be faithful to Allah. The infidels. How did Allah seduce Satan? Have you ever thought of this question? How did Allah seduce Satan? You know, Allah seduced Satan by making him, by making him literally worship Adam where he, he is not supposed to worship Adam. So Allah knows Satan is a prideful guy. He's arrogant. And he ordered all the angels to worship Adam. So all the angels worshipped Adam. By the way, the word worship here, the word worship here, which Allah, yes, is you do use, use in the Quran. It's not an Arabic word. So Allah, Muhammad, Jibreel, do not know it is an Arabic word. That's why he's saying bow down. No, it is worship. Yes, Jud is worship. Hebrew word, okay? Study Hebrew. You'll learn exactly what I'm talking about. But... So Allah seduced Satan by asking him, giving him the order to worship Adam. He refused to worship Adam because he was prideful, and that's why Allah seduced him, tricked him, caused him not to sin, uh, not to obey Allah by doing the wrong things. Uh, because if you worship Adam, he's not that's not the right thing. He's supposed to worship Allah, and Allah tricked him. He did the right thing, and because of his pride, Allah said, "Oh, you are out of here." Allah kicked him out of heaven and sent him to earth. And then he's going to send him eternity in hell because he refused to worship Adam, which is the right thing to do because he's not supposed to worship Adam. And by the way, we ask our dear Muslim friend, was Satan a jinn or Satan is an angel to start with? Because we know that Allah only asked the angels to worship Adam and Satan from the jinn, so he does not have to worship Adam. He's not an angel. It's a chaos for our dear Muslim friend who would love to investigate that because trust me, you'll find out too many contradictions in the Quran. Too many contradictions. Now, uh, in Quran chapter 11, uh, in Quran, let me move to the next one here. Quran chapter 25 uh, and verse 20. And we did not send before you, Allah, here speak to Muhammad, of the messengers, except surely they are, they ate food and walked in the street. And we made some of you to be sedition to some others. Will you be patient and your Lord will 
uh, was seeing your lord was seen uh allah said muhammad be patient and allah is telling us again like we said earlier he used people to seduce others we use allah is creating uh, uh sedition on earth but from people to another people chaos and that's exactly what satan did to adam and eve and it's amazing this is literally I, I'm, I'm astonished how muslim can read this and mix and make sense to him in quran chapter 7 verse 27 oh children of adam do not let satan seduce you as he got your parents out of the garden by the way the garden is in heaven allah created adam and eve in heaven cast them to earth nonsense no biblical teaching but that's okay how he did that okay by taking their clothes off to show them their private parts adam do you know what is uh, between down there no i don't know let me show you take his clothes oh, oh you got a private part here Eve. let me show you what you got oh she have a private part too this is like nonsense i'm not kidding you this is just simply nonsense why because this is not what happened in the bible the bible said adam and eve were naked and they were not ashamed uh, when satan seduced him it's not about uh, take their clothes off because they have nothing to wear to start with and it's not to show them their prophet but they know their prophet part it is to disobey god by eating from the tree which god said not to eat from anyway uh this is just a couple examples to show you there is a contradiction in the now I have a question here. Hell Allah, you bet the ayat of Quran and Sakha Bayat and Ukhra, am you bet the Kalimati, Wayati, Abedin? Am la you bet? Does Allah in the Quran change the verses of the Quran and abrogate them? Or he will never do that to his words? I mean, the logic question was given by our dear Muslim Imam here is there's no way Allah in the Quran tells the, the Christian, don't worship Jesus. At the same time, he said, worship Jesus. No, there is plenty of ways. You know why? Because this contradiction is all over the Quran. I'm going to give you just one example here. Quran chapter 18, verse 27. And recite what had been revealed to you from the book of your Lord. And no one can change the word of Allah. No one can change his words. Another one, the word of Allah. Kalimat Allah. Another verse. Anyway, here, no one can change his words. Nobody can change his words. This is reality. Allah's word is perfect, written, done. As a matter of fact, from Muslim scholars, the entire Quran, ladies and gentlemen, was written in the guarded board before the creation. So every word in the Quran is known, written in the guarded board in the by the throne of Allah before any before Adam was created, before Noah, before Moses, before Muhammad. Everything is written in the Quran was already written. Muhammad just received it and write it down as it exactly was in the guarded board, which the board Allah protect himself. Now, let's go to Quran 16, 101. And if that's Allah speaking here, we exchange one verse. In a place of another verse. Whoa, 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 whoa. I saw it. You said no one can change his words, Allah's words. And now Allah is telling me he is changing his own words. Kings in the Bible do not change their words. There's a righteous king, they don't change their words. And Allah, the God of Muhammad, changed his words. Well, you tell me, my friends, how can this be? How can Allah said no one can change his word? He will never change his word. But at the same time, he changes words. Uh, the doctrine of abrogation is a big problem for most Muslims who do not know abrogation. Abrogation is to cancel, to erase, to delete, uh, to replace. And they say, well, these are in the commands. If Allah said do this and don't do that, Allah can change his mind. Really? Really? What about the story in the Quran? When we read a story in the Quran, which happened once, and you read it in different places and the story as you continue to repeat this throughout the pages of the quran you see contradiction which story is the right story it's not just abrogating the command it's abrogating the story of what happened a good example let's talk about mary when mary was given the good news of isa son of mary how did she receive that message who gave her that good news okay i'll give you just quick two example here Quran uh, chapter 3 verse 45 and Quran chapter uh, 7 uh, chapter 19 the book of Mary uh, verses 17 18 and 19 okay in Quran 345 listen carefully when the angels said with who's speaking here 
angels. How many? Bunch of them together. Yep. Like you see in the movie made by Hollywood, the voice echoing, but from 10 people speaking one time. That's exactly what it is. And if you read what the angels said to Mary in Quran chapter 3 and compare it to what happened in Quran chapter 19, it's a two different story. As if we're talking about two different Mary, the Mary of Quran chapter 3 has nothing to do with the Mary of Quran chapter 19. But in reality, according to the Quran, it's the same Mary. So in Quran chapter 19, beginning from verse 17, so she took a veil apart from them. That's her family, her folks. So we sent our spirit to her. Who? Our spirit. Who is our spirit? It's not the spirit of Allah. <laughs> uh, the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit. No, 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 no. That is, as Muslim claim, angel Jibreel. Gabriel. Wrong name. Jibreel. So we sent our spirit to her. So he appeared to her a normal human. Okay. So Mary is going to receive the good news about the baby, the baby Isa, son of Mary, from a man. A mustache, a beard, uh, six feet, a normal guy. Normal human. No, nothing unusual about him. Was Mary talking to a bunch of angels or she talking to a man? Normal man. And if you keep going with the story, Quran chapter 3 and Quran chapter 19, sometimes Mary asks the same question. How can I have a son when no man has touched me? Or how can I have a son when no one has touched me and I was unchaste? And read the answer of the angels and the answer of the normal man. Two completely different answers, except for the word likewise. Likewise, blah, 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 blah. Likewise, blah, 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 blah. Too many different contradiction all over the Quran. This is just one example. Go to Quran chapter 3 and go to Quran chapter 19 and read the question of Mary. How can I have a son who no one has touched me? And read the answer of these two different groups. Completely different answer. That's contradiction. How can we have contradiction in the Quran, my friend? It's very simple. The Quran is loaded with contradiction. But if you're wearing the glasses of Islam and you believe that there is no contradiction in the Quran, and you see, you saw that to exposing a problem in the Arabic language that Allah is telling the people to worship him and Isa or and the Christ. Oh, that, that, that must be a wrong translation. No, that must be the norm of Allah in the Quran. That's how Allah make many mistakes all over the Quran. Not only grammatic mistakes, but actually a contradiction everywhere else. Uh, another one here, uh, let's just show you contradictions in the Quran as well. Uh, Quran uh, chapter 4, verse 79, and Quran chapter 9, verse 51. In, for, in 479, whatever good fortune befall you is from God. Allah, small g, Allah, okay? And whatever misfortune befall you is from your own self. Good fortune from Allah. Bad fortune, problem, musibah, karisa is from you. Okay, I got the point. So anytime something bad happened to you, you did it. Every time something good happened to you, oh, it's Allah. Allah is blessing you with good. Let's go to Quran chapter 9, verse 51. Say, nothing can befall us except what Allah has prescribed for us. Nothing. The good and the bad. Yes, indeed, the good and the bad. Is this a contradiction? I guess. I believe it is. As a matter of fact, nothing will happen to the son of Adam except it was written while he was still cooked inside the mother womb. Remember we talked about that in the miraculous miracle of Muhammad, the, uh, the, the stages of embryology? Everything about you, when you cough, <coughs> if you sneeze, if you, you don't know how to talk like me right now. It's because Allah wrote this before you were born. Everything about you, every word, every thought, every action, every sin you're going to commit. You know how many times you're going to commit adultery? It's because Allah said you're going to commit adultery with all these women. He wrote it. He prescribed it. You have no option to escape the will of Allah, even in good. That is a contradiction. All right? Um, that's a good one here. The order of when things happened. The order when things happened. So I'll give you a good example here. In Quran uh, chapter 4, uh, verse 153, and Quran chapter 2, verses 54 and 55. In Quran 4, 153, notice carefully here. Allah said, the people of the book ask you to bring down on them a book from the heavens. So indeed, whoa, 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 whoa. I saw the Quran is a book given to Muhammad from heaven. 
If the Christian and the Jew ask Muhammad, show us a show us a book from heaven. Here it is, the word of Allah, the Quran. No, Muhammad did not know that the Quran at this time it is a miracle of his message, is a miracle of his the proof of his prophethood. But that's okay. So indeed, they ask Moses be bigger than that. Oh, they ask Moses more than what they ask. So they said, show us Allah openly. We want to see Allah openly. Can we find this anywhere in the Bible? I guarantee you, Brother Sam can open the Bible right now, take the mic, and I'll show you the opposite. When Moses went up to the mountain, and the Jewish people saw the lightning and the smoke and the thunder, and all, oh, they said, oh, no, Moses. When he came down with his white, shiny face, oh, no, no, you, you, you go and talk to God. We have nothing to do with God. We don't want to be near God. The opposite. Muhammad got it wrong. He actually got it wrong. But it's okay. So the they, uh, thunderbolt uh, saves them from their for, for their injustice. Listen carefully. Then they took the calf. After that. So when the Jewish people worship the calf, it's after the thunderbolt took them. Why the thunderbolt took them? Because they told Moses, we want to see God face to face. If you cannot show us God, that means you're lying to us, maybe, or whatever. You make up the stories about the Torah and God says and God did not say. The opposite of what the Bible said. Now, let's go to Quran chapter 2, the book of Cal and verse 54. And we go to, and when Moses said to his people, oh, my people, surely we have done, we have, uh, done unjust to ourselves by taking the calf. So now they are ready worshiping the calf, the golden calf. So repent to your creator. So kill yourself. I get that. It doesn't make any sense to me. My American English readers, when they read, so kill yourself, Moses tells the people, repent, and then he said, so kill yourself. It's like, it must be something wrong in the translation. No, that's exactly what Allah said in the Quran. Moses tells the people, repent or kill yourself. <laughs> so kill yourself. This is the best for you from your creator. The best thing for a Jewish man to do is to kill himself. Commit suicide, knife, sword, fall on a sword, whatever. Hang yourself from a tree. Just kill it. That's the best thing Moses said to the Jewish people to do is to kill themselves, to commit suicide. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me to understand the Quran. So, repent to your to your creator. So, kill yourself. This is the best for you from your creator. So, he relent on you. Surely, <laughs> listen carefully, he is the relenting, the merciful. Now, verse 55. And when you said, oh, Moses, Will you not believe? We will not believe in you, in, in you until we see Allah openly. So the thunderbolt, the thunderbolt seized you. So what happened in the order of the verses? In Quran chapter 4, verse 53, they asked who to see Allah. Allah sent the thunderbolt on them, and then they worship the cow. That is the order. Read it on your own, my dear Muslim friends. Go to Quran chapter 4, verse 153, and take your time. Read it in the Arabic language, okay? Maybe Usama Daktok is lying in his translation in the English language, okay? Now, you go to Quran chapter 2, verse 54, the deceased. The first, he worships the cow. Then the thunderbolt takes him, huh? the lightning sparked him from the heaven. Then they obviously... Uh, uh, sorry, first they worshiped the cow, then the thunder Paul came on them. Then the last thing they asked Moses, we want to see Allah. Backwards. The order is chaos. You know why is that? Because Muhammad forget. He made the first story. He was a few years later, made the second story in the Quran. And people remember that story. And people remember the story. And now we got two different stories with chaos order. Good luck to figure out an answer for it. Because in reality, the Quran contradicts itself. This is just some example. Now, how about the things happening in the past, the creation of the world? I'm going to give you one example to show you this big errors on the Quran. So if I go to Quran, chapter 50, verse 38, we read, And indeed, we created the heavens and the earth and what is between them in six days, and no worrying touched us. Allah created the heavens and the earth in six days. Notice, heavens created first and the earth was created second heavens and the earth. Now, you go to Quran chapter 41, verse 9. Not only wrong days, not six days, but eight days, but it's backwards. He creates the earth first and the heaven second. 
Have you become infidels in him who created the earth in two days, as the first two days, and you make partners with him? This is the Lord of the worlds, and he made it in it uh, uh, stabilizers, uh, st stabilizers on top of it. That's a mountain, and he has blessed it, and he measured in it uh, provision in four equal days. So he created the earth two days, Four days he's working hard to put all the provision, you know, the trees and the fruit and the animals and the fish and the bird, all the provision. Okay, now, okay, then you know what then means? That next, then next, okay, he turned to the heavens and it was smoke, so he said to it and to the earth, come willingly or gradually, gradually, in hateful, in hateful ways. Not with your free will. They said, Whoa, ho, ho, ho. the earth spoke to Allah. Yeah, and the smoke, the heaven spoke to Allah. Yeah. Does this make any sense? The earth speak? I wonder what language does the earth spoke or the heaven smoke? Spoke. Hebrew or Arabic? Oh, we have a song in Arabic. Il kalima Arabi. Il kalima Arabi, which means the earth speak Arabic. So obviously, the earth spoke Arabic to Allah. So uh, then they, uh, uh, they they said we we come willingly. So he completed them seven heavens in two days. Add numbers two plus four plus two is eight, and the earth was created before the heaven. Quran fifty thirty eight. The heavens was created before the earth. Contradiction and nonsense. Uh, we'll uh, I want to move on uh, in here. Um, Another very important, yeah. And you know what? Let's let's get this one. Um, Quran chapter 41, verse 9. Say, Have you become infidels in him who created the earth in two days? Actually, this is just what we covered earlier. So let's skip this one. Let's move on to uh, Quran 569. I have so much material, and I want to cover it in this two hours. I want to move and lose time here. Quran 569. Surely, listen carefully, that is Allah's word. Talking about contradictions of the Quran. How in the world Allah says something and says the opposite about it in the same book of the Quran? Surely those who believed and those who are Jews and the Sabians and the Nasara, supposedly the Christians of Muhammad days, whoever believed in Allah and in the last day and did good deed, did a good deed. So there is no fear on them and they will not grieve. If you read that verse, you found that Muslims. Jews, Christians, Sabians who do not believe in God, the God of the Jews and the Christians, they are uh, 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 like a cult out there. Okay, all these people, if they do good deed, believe in Allah, do good deed, there's no fear. All of them are going to make it to heaven. Your Allah is telling me in Quran 5 69 that when I die, if I believe in Allah, I do good deed, I do a lot of good deed. Okay, I will make it to heaven, no problem whatsoever. Now, let's go to Quran 572. Infidel indeed are those who said, surely Allah is the Christ, son of Mary. Excuse me. All Christians, all Nasara, all Nasara, all Christians believe that Jesus, son of Virgin Mary, is God. So Allah in one verse said that we're going to make it to heaven. Another verse, he said, we're an infidel. How can Allah say that both, both uh, side of the story and they're both correct? Let me question. If I die right now as a Christian, will I make it to heaven? Well, 9, chapter, Quran, chapter 5, verse 69, for sure I will. Quran, chapter 5, verse 72, uh, no, no, I'm an infidel. How about Quran 5, 17, infidel indeed are those who said, surely Allah is a Christ. And by the way, these are the verses which he put on his slide. When we go back to his video, you're going to see this verse is written. I'm quoting to you the verses which he is acknowledging in his video to let us know that we're a bunch of infidels. But these verses contradict. The verses of the Quran, which I know for sure if I die, I'll make it to heaven as a Christian or as a Jew or as a Sabians. That's a problem. That's a problem. And the worse than that, every Muslim, like our dear friend here, must behead people like me. Why? Because Allah in Quran 47 4 says, So when you meet those who became infidels, so strike the next until you have made a great slaughter among them. So, in one hand, Christian will make it to heaven, on the other hand, there are a bunch of infidels, and you Muslim believers must behead them. That's contradiction. It's all over the Quran. 
okay it's all over the quran here's the verses i told you you see on the screen uh, 517 572 and blah 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 we're going to cover 4171 a little bit later let's see here what our dear friend here would like to tell us more about my false translation of quran 931 the same book says that don't the christians think and ponder and reflect don't they see that jesus and mary were human beings that they had to eat don't they see that they had to eat that they needed sustenance that if god didn't sustain them they wouldn't exist wow i think he got a point don't you guys use your logic did you use your common sense Allah is telling us in the Quran that Jesus and his mother. Why, 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 why you insert his mother in the talk? Why Allah want to talk about Mary? No Christian ever say Mary is a God. We're talking about Jesus here. Is Jesus God or not? But since Mary and Jesus eat, and obviously they go to the bathroom, that means uh, they need the sustain of Allah and uh, they're human. They're not God. Wait a minute. Are you first of all? Let's read the verse from the Quran. I, I'd rather read the verse from the Quran to see what Allah said exactly. Here we go. They will well, will they not repent to Allah and ask his forgiveness? And Allah is forgiving merciful. Verse 75 of Quran chapter 5. It says, The Christ, the son of Mary, is nothing except a messenger. Indeed, other messengers have gone before him, and his mother is a person of integrity. Sadiqa, huh? They were eating the food. Look at how we have the verses, how we show the verses to them. Then look at how they turn away. Oh, Jesus and his mama used to eat food. Therefore, we know for sure, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus cannot be God and Mary cannot be God. First of all, there's no reason to put Mary in the story here because nobody ever believed Mary is God. Okay? Now, it is because Jesus eat that means he's not God. You mean if God choose to eat right now, if God choose to eat, he cannot eat because if he eat, he's no longer God. You know what? If God will not eat or if God cannot eat, he's no longer God. Because we know that God is able to do all things. Nothing is impossible. If God want to become Jesus and eat uh, three cows and, and five camels and drink uh, 300,000 gallon of milk, he can. You know why? Because God is able to do all things. And if God cannot eat a sandwich or cannot eat a meal or cannot drink a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, that means that God is not God. Because he can't. If he can't, he's not God. If he can, he's God. We know for sure God cannot sin. Because sin goes against the nature of God. But God can eat. Now, let me show you something amazing about Islam. Muslim believes that he is the son of Mary was not crucified he was not killed he actually escaped the window in the from the window in the upper room up to heavens not logic at all he went up against the gravity uh 200 pounds or so all the way to heaven and jesus is alive in heaven the last two thousand years ladies and gentlemen and believe it or not in the last two thousand years jesus never ate anything which means he's god he's alive in heaven right now and he never ate anything it is joke it is ridiculous to tell me since Jesus ate that means he's not God. No, Jesus is the word of God who became flesh and he was perfect. Read your Quran, holy son, righteous son. Muhammad is not. Nobody else is except Jesus Christ. He is the perfect son of God. He is the holy son of God. Who is Jesus' father? He said, the problem with Muslims is they misunderstand the sonship of Christ. As Muhammad and Allah Jibreel do not know what Christians really believe about the sonship of Christ. They think Allah must have a girlfriend. He must fall in love with her, take her in bed, have a sexual relationship with her, and get her pregnant. That's why Allah in the Quran said, how can he have a son when he has no female companion? Logic, common sense. That is foolishness. This is the stupidity of Allah, Muhammad, and Jibreel, and every Muslim who believes that's the Christian beliefs. Because believe it or not, not one Christian in the last 2,000 years ever believed in this false teaching of Muhammad and Allah. This is not what we Christian believe. Jesus, Son of God. Jesus, Son of God, because he came from the Father. He is the Word of God who became flesh. He is God, the Word who became flesh. I'm the son of Egypt. I'm the son of Nile. The Nile, I'm the son of generosity. I'm the son of the way because I travel all the time. That does not make these 
fathers have sexual relationship with my mama. Mama, my mother never had sex with the Nile, and that's why they call me the son of the Nile. No, I came from Egypt. I came from the Nile. My family is generous, and so on and so on. These are just names, even in the Quran. Allah used the word Ibn Sabil, the son of the way. Can you tell me, is there is a father by the name, the way, or there's a street, had sexual relationship with a female and got her pregnant, and then she produced her baby? No. The son of the way is a man who travels all the time, coming from the road all the time. Bedouins were travelers. They don't settle in, in one place. Son of the way. Okay? Because he is traveling all the time. He's coming from the road all the time. All right. Let's move on to the next teaching of our friend here about my false translation in Quran 931. The same book says that Jesus... Jesus is no more than a messenger. He's a messenger of God. He's not God himself. He's not God incarnate. He's not God in the flesh or part of a triune God. He is no more than a messenger of God, a prophet of God. Jesus, in the same book, the Quran says, he's just a messenger. He's just a prophet. He's not in the incarnate. He's not God come in the flesh. Says who? Says Muhammad. Do you have any logic? To believe Muhammad in these lies? I mean, what other source before, beside Muhammad? Do we have a second witness? No. Muhammad said so. Did you ever examine Muhammad's men mental condition, physical condition, spiritual condition, life condition? Was he a righteous man? Was he a holy man? Was he a perfect man? Did he live right before Allah and the Muslim people? Did he live to prove that he is really a prophet and a messenger? What evidence do you have beside Muhammad said so? In the Quran, for heaven's sake, Muhammad was a child molester, a sex offender, a prophet pretender. Muhammad was a womanizer, or Muhammad was an adulterer. Muhammad was a thief. Muhammad was a thug. Muhammad was a terrorist. Muhammad was an evil man. Read the Quran, my Muslim friends. Examine your Muhammad. Study the Sunnah of Muhammad. Study the bibliography of Muhammad by your own top scholar, like Ibn Hisham. You will see that Muhammad was not a very decent man. Read the Quran and you see exactly what I'm talking about. If you want to debate me on that, I would love to debate you on that to prove to you that these are truths about Muhammad. You leave the true word of God in the Bible to follow a man like that Muhammad? You need some help. You need some help. Now, let's move on to the answer for that. The Quran, the same Quran says, Jesus is just a prophet. Jesus is just a man. Let's read Quran 4171. Before we even read Quran 4, 171, the word of Allah is created or eternal. You are a decent Muslim. The word of Allah is eternal. Have no beginning, have no end. The word of Allah is eternal. And Jesus is the word of Allah. The spirit of Allah, is it eternal or it is created? Did Allah create his spirit? No. The spirit of Allah, which is in the Bible, the Holy Spirit, you do not know that in Islam. The spirit of Allah is eternal. So the word of Allah is eternal, the word of Allah is eternal. Let, let's learn about Jesus now. Same Jesus, same Quran, okay? It says what? O people of the book, do not exaggerate in your religion and do not speak against Allah except the truth. Surely the Christ Isa, Jesus of Muhammad, huh? the son of Mary, is only a messenger of Allah and his word which he cast to Mary. Notice the word is given to Mary. The word of Allah, the eternal word of Allah came from heaven to Mary. It was not created to go to Mary. It is, and it's not a word from Allah. It is the word of Allah cast to Mary, given to Mary, and a spirit from him. Isa is the word of Allah and a spirit of Allah given to Mary. No beginning, no end, eternal. Well, the same Quran tell me here that Isa is God because he's eternal. The word of Allah is eternal. The spirit of Allah is eternal. Let me share with you four description of Allah in Quran 4, uh, 349, to tell me for sure that these are attributes of Allah given to us. I know most will say by Allah's will. Yes, indeed. Muhammad told you that. Remember, the sinful Muhammad told you that and you believe it, okay? But guess what? One of these attrib attributes which is given to Isa, which he knows the unseen or the unknown, is not given by the permission of Allah. In the same verse. Let's read. Quran 349, and a messenger to you, to the children of Israel. Indeed, I came to you with a sign from your Lord. I create. What is the attribute of Allah? The name of Allah, Al-Khaliq, the creator. 
I create to you the figure of a bird from a clay. So I breathe into it. So it will become a bird by Allah's permission. I love Allah's permission. Allah is going to share his glory, his attribute as a creator with Isa. That's why Allah said he is the best of the creators. As a matter of fact, there are more creators than Isa in the Quran. They have to be plural, three or more. But that doesn't make any sense to you that Allah, the creator, the creator causes Isa to create. And by the way, we Christians don't believe in that story. It's made up. It's nonsense. Baby Jesus, you know, 10, 12 years old, he was making a bird out of clay. And then the rabbi saw it and they got upset with his father. Hey, your son working on the Sabbath. And he <laughs> blew on it air and they flew. The first miracle Jesus ever performed, it was when he was 30 years old, changing the water to wine in the wedding of Galilee. Not making birds out of clay and breathing it and become life. That is another story from another book, Muhammad Kabi from. He does not know it is literally a made up story but that's okay now he said and i heal the blind and the liver huh the healer as shafi isa is equal with allah in healing healing what the blind and the liver and i raise the dead by allah's permission he raised the dead al muhi one of the names of allah one of the attributes of allah the one who give life to the dead allah is going to share his attribute with a messenger was a prophet. Why he did not share this with Muhammad, the best of all, as Muslims claim? I mean, if he can give it to Isa and he can give this miracle to Moses, why not give one of them, just one, to Muhammad? At least to prove that he's not a bad guy, but he's a prophet. One miracle. Okay? And then he said, and I inform you that's alam al huh? wa alimkum. Inform you about what you eat and what you store in your houses. And I do not read there by the permission of Allah. So show me, my dear Muslim friends, where is the permission of Allah for Isa, son of Mary, to have one of the attributes of Allah, which knowing the unseen? Surely in this is a sign for you if you were believers. Uh, Mr. Imam, the same Quran who says Isa is just a man, is telling me he actually carry four of the attributes of Allah, one of them without Allah's permission, knowing the unknown, knowing the unseen. Let's continue with our dear uh, Muslim friend here and his uh, proof that uh, I lied when I translate to you Quran 931 the way I translate it. Let's continue. Elsewhere in the Quran, God rhetorically asks the question of Jesus, did you tell your followers to worship you and your mother? as two gods besides God and Jesus answers and says no how could I tell the people how could I teach the people something which I have no authority to teach them I only told them to worship God my Lord and your Lord my God and your God wow a rhetorical question you mean that question really never happened? Well, God was just joking with Isa hey Isa uh, did you no I did not and I only told him what you told me a rhetorical question or a serious question. Why Muslims don't put the verse of the Quran on the screen and read it so we can learn together like I'm doing right now. Let's look here. Here we go. This is what, my friend. Here is the verse of the Quran, 5, 1, It's not a rhetorical question. It's a real question. It's a question made up by Muhammad about Allah asking Isa because that question is telling me, the answer of Isa, is that Allah is stupid. Allah does not know what he's talking about. Allah is not all-knowing. And wow, when you examine the verses of the Quran, it goes the opposite of what Muslims are trying to teach us. Listen to the word of Allah. And when Allah said, O Isa, son of Mary, did you say to the people, take me and my mother as two gods other than Allah, not beside Allah, other than Allah. Min dunillah. Get rid of Allah, and we're going to worship Mary and Isa. Is this what we really... He said a minute ago, no, he's a little bit, changed a little bit, you know. He's not being faithful in his translation, but that's okay. First, he said a rhetorical question is not, it's a real question. Second, he said without and not, uh, beside, no, it's not beside, it's without. Get rid of Allah and worship Mary and Jesus. First of all, who in the world will believe that there is any Christian who worship Jesus and worship Mary? Show me the denomination, give me the name of the church. 
Give me the name of the denomination who worship Jesus and Mary as two gods without Allah. Now you forget about God. God put aside. We don't. We no longer worship the God, the Father. We just worship God, the Mother, and God, the Son. Only God, the Mother, and God, the Son. Mm -hmm. Mindun Allah, other than Allah. Now, he said, listen to the answer of Isa. Praise be to you. Wow. It is not for me that I say what is not true for me. If I had said it, so indeed, you know it. It's not a rhetorical answer now. It's a real answer too. It's not for me to say what I'm not supposed to say. And if I said it, you should know it. You know what it's saying here? Allah, how dare are you accusing me for saying something I did not do? How dare you accuse me of saying something I never said? Because you are Allah. You know everything. I did not say that. And if I said it, you know it. Which means, you know I did not say it. How dare are you to accuse me of saying something I did not say? Wow, what a powerful answer. I never thought that a prophet would speak to Allah like that. Never. In the Quran, you never see anybody talk to Allah like Isa, son of Mary here. Because, obviously, it's made up. The whole thing is made up. Muhammad made it up. And Muslim keep repeating it. And when they repeat it, they will not read the whole verse. Just made up the propaganda answer you heard. Okay? Let's continue. Let's continue. Yes, Sam. That's okay. That's okay. Amen. Amen. So it's not my fault here. That's okay. I can start from this the top of this verse. How far ago? We'll, we'll start from 5 1 16 again. Is it like a minute ago or five minutes ago? Right. That's okay, bro. Take your time. That's okay. Can you shut the computer completely off and start over again? Oh, have this ever happened before? All right, praise God. All right, I'm going to start from this video here. All right, I hope everything is clear and you guys can come. Sorry, so uh, we have some uh, connection problem with the internet. And um, praise God that uh, we're back again. I'm going to play his video one more time. We'll capture here from this point down. So if uh, you see a repeat, that's fine. Praise God. It's better to have repeat than to have missing information. So here's his video. Elsewhere in the Quran, God rhetorically asks the question of Jesus. Did you tell your followers to worship you and your mother as two gods besides God? And jesus answers and says no how could i tell the people how could i teach the people something which i have no authority to teach them i only told them to worship god my lord and your lord my god and your god 
Good, good, good. So obviously here, uh, our dear Muslim Imam here is lying because he made the real question in the Quran to a rhetorical question. It's like Allah is joking with his, hey, he's a, hey, let's make a, a, a drama here, you and I, let's pretend like I'm asking you. No, it's not a pretending. The question was real, and the answer of Isa is real. And we listen to the verse of the Quran, as I'm going to share it with you now, you found that that verse actually will not help the Muslim imams, because that verse show you that Muhammad is literally uh, mocking Allah or making Isa uh, disrespect to Allah. Listen to the verse. Here is the verse. Quran chapter 5 and verse 116. And when Allah said, it did not say a rhetorical question, it is real. Where is call Allah? Allah said, Allah said, What? Oh, Isa, son of Mary, did you say to the people, Take me and my mother as two gods other than Allah? Notice here, there's a question mark. And the question mark means Allah is asking questions. And Muslim will tell you, Allah will not ask any question. I love it. I love it. You know why? Because they go to the Bible and they read the Genesis account and say, here we go. Allah asked question to Adam. Allah asked question to Eve. Allah asked question to this. Allah. That means the Quran, the Bible is not the word of God because Allah is all-knowing and he knows everything. He will never ask question. No. In the Quran, Allah asks questions. And Allah in the Bible, the God of the Bible, did not ask questions because he did not know. He wants us to know where we're at. We want, he gave us a chance to repent of our sin. Okay, now, so, but he did not say, beside Allah, it is other than Allah. So the question is this, Allah is asking Isa, if he told the people, his followers, the Christians, 2,000 years ago, to worship him, Isa, and his mother, not to worship Allah, without Allah, forget about Mindunillah, kiss Allah goodbye, and we're gonna worship, only worship Isa and Mary. Now, a challenge, I challenge any Muslim to show me one church, one church in Christianity in the last 2,000 years, and that church worshipped Isa and Mary, and they did not worship Allah. Because Mindunullah without Allah. That cult never exists. Christian worship Jesus Christ. The apostle and the early eyewitnesses, the 500 men and more of the women and the children who saw the resurrected Lord, they worshiped him. They worshiped Jesus Christ, not Isa, son of Mary. I don't know who this Isa is. But the question was given from Allah to Isa, did you tell the people to worship you and your mother without me? Allah is jealous here. I, he want to be in the picture. No, we, we, I mean, it's like, it's okay to worship you, but you need to add me too. You know, no, 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 no. This question is not rhetorical, it's a real question. And listen to the real answer of Isa, son of Mary. He said, praise be to you. Praise be to you. It is not for me that I say what is not true for me. I will not do that. And listen carefully next to in, in the red line here. If I had said it, so indeed you know it. Hello? What kind of God are you, Allah? He accused me of saying something I never said. If I said that, you should know it. But because you know I did not say it, how dare are you to say that I said something I have no right to say? Wow. Allah's all knower is asking Isa about something he said, which in reality he did not say. My friends, this is a made up verses by Muhammad. He's trying to put internal message. And you can guess it up from the verses. Oh, Allah spoke to Isa. And Allah told Isa, did you? And Isa said, no, I did not. So good. Now, all Christians, stop worshiping Mary and stop worshiping Isa. Because if you do that, you're going against the will of Allah and the will of Isa. No. No Christian ever worshiped Mary. And Isa never tell anybody to worship him and his mother in the flesh without Allah or with Allah. This is nonsense. This is nonsense. But listen to the rest of the verse. You would know what is in my soul, and I do not know what is in your soul. Oh, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. And ta'lamu ma fi nafsi. Wa la'alamu ma fi nafsika. Are you trying to tell me that Allah have a soul? Allah is a human? The soul you found in human, the soul you found in animals. Now, the human have one more item is called spirit. So we're flesh and spirit and soul. Animals have flesh and soul. No spirit. They'll live forever. So Allah have a soul? 
Isa is saying that in the Quran. My friend, go to the Quran, chapter 5, verse 116. See, that's why the Muslim Imam will not quote the verse. This is all a rhetorical question. And really, really, Allah did not say it. Like in other translation, and Allah will say in the future, they make qala sayaqul. They change the verb from the past tense to the future tense because Allah did not ask Isa yet. But in the day of judgment, he will ask Isa that question. You know how professional liars are these in their translation? We don't do that. We don't. We're faced with our translation. Once again, if any Muslim found an error in my, in my translation, I would love to know it so I can correct it in the next editing, okay? But trust me, so far, we're doing good. Our translation is accurate. Now, he said, surely you are the knower of the unseen. If Allah is the knower of the unseen, he should never, never, never ask Isa if he says something he did not say, which is to worship him and Mary without Allah. So that is your Quran, sir. That is your Quran. Let's move on to the next video. So using common sense, how is it possible that this very same book would then tell you elsewhere that you're supposed to be worshiping God and Jesus? So just common sense on the part of our Christian friends should be enough to dismiss such a mistranslation, to be able to identify such a mistranslation as being just that, a mistranslation, something that was done wrong. Mistranslation, common sense. As if there is any such thing as common sense in Islam. My friends, if you take common sense out of Islam, you, and literally, if you take anything that does not have sense out of Islam, there will be nothing, not even the cover of the Quran. There's no common sense in Islam. Uh, let's talk about creation. Adam was uh, 60 cubit tall, 90 feet tall. Does this have any common sense? Now, a mama can be pregnant up to four or five years. Does this make any sense to you? Now the earth is flat. Does this make any sense to you? The sun set in a muddy spring. That's how it gets dark in the evening. Does this make any sense to you? And on and on and on with the many error and many nonsense. I mean, think about it. He's the son of Mary. Was born when Allah breathed into Mary private part from his spirit. Does this make any sense? You tell this to the atheist. They said, I don't believe in the virgin birth. Why? Because it does not make any sense. But Muslims believe in the virgin birth. You know why? Because Allah said in the Quran, it's not about common sense. It is if it is in the Quran or not. And if they do not know it in the Quran, they will not believe it. And then when you prove it to them, it's in the Quran, then you have a struggle. That's why many Muslims are leaving Islam and become an atheist. Sadly, to burn in the same hell. Because there's no hell number one for Muslims and hell number two for atheists. That's why we must love the Muslim people and share the truth of the gospel with them. See, they don't believe in Jesus because Muhammad said so. Let's expose Muhammad to them. Let's expose the Quran to them. And they will accept Christ as Lord and Savior. And then they will not die for eternity in hell. Common sense? You really believe only in common sense? What common sense have to do with a man, a prophet, uh, Isa, son of Mary, to go out of this earth from the window of the house flying in the sky all the way behind the cloud to the fourth heaven or the fifth heaven by the way there's only three heaven in the bible okay so there's extra four common sense okay how a hundred and eighty two hundred two hundred and ten pound a body fly outside the gravity alive and he's still there for the last two years two thousand years alive not eating drinking must be common sense must be common sense. I'm sorry. There's so much of things in Islam is not common sense at all. And if we can do a show, me and Sam, in the future about the common sense of Allah or the common sense of Muhammad or the common sense of Muslim scholars, we can talk about it for weeks. We actually can go through all the whole pages of the Quran to prove to you that the Quran is a nonsense book. It's a fiction book. It's a made-up book. Now, I believe the problem with our dear Muslim friends, like our dear brother here, is they don't know the Quran. Simply because they don't know Arabic. He said himself in the beginning, he said he's, he does not have Arabic background. And don't be surprised. I met with Muslims in Indonesia. I've been there twice to do submission work. And praise God for the many, many, many Muslims who come to know Christ in a few hours, sharing with them from the Quran in their own language. As I was opening the Indonesian Quran to them, I read, here's what Allah said. And you can look at their face. Allah said that? Whoa! That was just after September 11. But you have to understand, 87% of the Muslim people, 1.7 right now in the world, I believe. 1.7 billion. 87% like this brother here, do not know Arabic. 
they have zero knowledge of the Arabic language, but they can memorize the Quran. Yes, in Indonesia, hundreds of people, they win uh, rewards for memorizing the entire Quran. I will not be surprised that this brother already memorized maybe half of the Quran, if not all of it, in the Arabic language, without knowing what he is memorizing. The Muslim man in Indonesia can put his words in the Arabic, put his finger on the words, and he will read them. He will read it. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. He opened in the middle. He knew what chapter. And he reads it. And then he asks him, what these words meant in the Indonesian language through my interpreter? He have no clue. So it, it's, it's, it's not actually demonic. Can you imagine with me, my dear friends? Memorizing the entire New Testament in the Greek language. The entire New Testament in the Greek language. Word for word. You can say it from your head. You can recite it from your head. Perfect pronunciation. And at the same time, you don't know any Greek. That's a miracle of all miracles. And that is the reality of what's happening in the Muslim world. 87%, 1 billion, 400 plus million, have never studied the Arabic language. They do not know how to read the newspaper, as he's going to talk about the newspaper later. But they memorize the entire Quran, or they memorize a big portion of the Quran. That is a miracle. A good example of that, I'm going to share with you a video here. I was doing some uh, debate with... Uh, Maybe his imam, not this brother here, but his imam, Anjan Chattered. You maybe know him. Watch this video, and you know exactly what I mean. <clears throat> that uh, actually, no. Before that, let me let me talk a little bit of, with uh, with him, and then I'm going to show the video to prove to you that many of the Muslim leaders, Pakistani, Bangladeshi, uh, uh, Afghani, Indonesian, uh, uh, from all over the foreign world, who do not know too much about the the Quran. Because they simply do not know the Arabic language, even though they memorize and they teach whatever they memorize from the book. But let's get one video here, and then I'll share with you that video with Anjum Chad. But here we go. But now let me briefly go into the grammar aspect of my argument. And trust me, I'm going to make it simple so that anyone can understand it. Even if you don't know a word of Arabic, just be patient and watch this video <clears> till the very end. Because I want to show you exactly, I want to show you precisely how evangelical Christians in America, like Usama Dakdok, like a lot of these Coptic Christians are actually twisting mm -hmm. the translation of the Quran, they're twisting the language, the very same thing that they're accusing Muslims of doing. They're saying that Muslims are mistranslating the Quran in a way to make it more palatable to an American audience, but they are actually the ones that are making fools out of you. So let me show you precisely and exactly how Usama Dakdok did that in chapter 9, verse 31 of his translation of the Quran called the Generous Quran. Uh, obviously, we have here the verse 931 in the Arabic language, but uh, he's going to prove to you, as we continue here, that uh, I am the one who is twisting the Quran. Uh, the one thing we accuse the Muslims of doing, well, we got plenty of English translations of the Quran. And believe it or not, many of them contradict each other. Many of Muslim scholars' translation, and here's my question, which translation does he, that Muslim brother, like? If you tell me which one, I will use to prove to him that he's dead wrong. As a matter of fact, as we're going to see in our study today, he is using translation 100% match mine. Even though in his explanation, he tried to uh, switch things around and make the verse uh, a little bit different order. No. Believe it or not, he does not know the Arabic language, as he already said. He maybe memorize the Quran like good Muslims. and uh, But in reality, uh, most Pakistani Muslims, most foreign Muslims do not have a clue the Arabic Quran or the language of the Quran. And here is what I'm sharing with you, the video uh, of Anjim Shadr, who, a man who sacrificed a lot for Allah. I mean, I have a very high respect for this gentleman here because he literally spent years in prison in England for his belief. And he's not a wishy-washy guy. He's a true Muslim believer. He believes in jihad. He believes in killing the infidels. He believes Sharia Islamic law will take over the world. And uh, the more you have people like him, for sure, Muslims will do that in planet Earth. And God helps the liberals, the uh, wackos, the one who do not have knowledge about Islam. They are giving the West to the Muslims. They don't even have to fight to take over the West. The, the liberals in the West are gladly to give the Muslims the West. If it's Europe or America. If it's Canada or Australia or New Zealand. But watch this video 
So you see exactly what I'm saying. Muslim people who are willing to sacrifice years of their life in prison and others who are willing to sacrifice their own lives, they will actually commit suicide for Allah. They will carry mission for Allah where they explode themselves with bombs and whatever they do, take airplane to a building, take cars to building, and they do that for the love for Allah because they are simply deceived. They do not know the real Islam. Watch this video and tell me how much Imam Omar, the top leader of the Muslim in England, knows about the Arabic language or Islam. Do you know what Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam means? Can you just, don't don't read a book for me. Just tell me what the sentence Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mean in English. Are you talking to me? Yeah, what Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mean? He made the peace and blessings of Allah be upon the Prophet. You're wrong, learn Arabic. Do you know what Sallah mean? The word Sallah. What does the word Sallah mean in, in English? I, I think you need to go back and to start No, 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 no. I'm asking a question. What does the word Salah mean in English? I know what it means. My you friend. Don't know, you don't know what it means. No, I, to go. this is my tongue. This is my mother tongue language. I'm not learning like you. You have not learned Islam yet. What does the word Salah mean? I, I would want to know that Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam means the main peace and blessings of Allah. That's what he taught you, my friend. My friend, you don't understand. They taught you this when they make you a baby Muslim. They tell you, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam means peace be upon him. No. What does the word Sallah mean? Never mind Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What does the word Sallah? What does the word Sallah mean? What do you think? What do you think it means exactly? Do you pray every day, my friend? What do you think it means? I'm, I'm telling you. Do you, do you know what the word pray? I'm just. I'm, I'm going to show to the world you are ignorant of Islam. As simple as you don't even the word Sallah mean. Like if, when you pray, you Salli. You suddenly means you, you pray. Now, when you say Allah, pray on Muhammad. Why can't you translate it right? You know what you were to pray. You pray five times a day, don't you? Lebanese or Syrian. You know, if you want to study Arabic, you can come to our class. Study Arabic. I can teach your scholar Arabic. All right. So what do we have here? Anjum Chadr. This is a man who sacrificed years of his life in prison. He just got out of prison, I believe, a few months ago after spending years in prison. I have this conversation with him before he was arrested a good, maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago or so. 12 years ago. I think he's been 10 or some years in, in prison. He does not know the word Salah. Imagine you don't know what the word pray, but when you pray, you pray in the Arabic language. Imagine you don't know the word pray, but you pray in English. So you say words in English. You make sentences in English to Allah. But at the same time, you don't know what the word pray means. Even when I asked him, I said, do you pray? He said, I, I, I don't know. If you want to know the word pray, uh, Salah means, he does not know. But the problem is the common sense. He does not know Arabic. He does not know the word Salah. He prayed in Arabic all his life. He's willing to die for Allah without knowing anything about Islam. Now, let's think about the sentence. We talk about logic or common sense. We're talking about common sense here. Inna Allah wal malaika yusalloon ala nabi. The Quran says, surely Allah and his angels pray upon Muhammad. How can Allah pray upon Muhammad? I mean, to whom Allah will pray? If I'm going to pray right now on uh, Brother Sam, Brother Sam have a little bit headache, and I say, Brother, let me pray over you. So I put my hand over Brother Sam's head, and I start, oh, Father God, I praise you, and oh, in the name of Jesus, bless my Brother Sam. In the name of Jesus, heal my Brother Sam, take the headache away. So I now pray on Sam, because I pray to Allah. I'm seeking Allah, God, the true God, Elohim, to heal my friend, Brother Sam. If I'm praying in Arabic or in English. Now, for Allah to pray, for God to pray, to whom he pray. Is there any higher God, bigger God, stronger God, mightier God to answer the prayer of Allah? It is the sentence Muslim repeat all their life since we're a baby. When you hear the word Muhammad, when you hear the, the, the word Rasul, messenger, when you word, hear the word Nabi, prophet, when you hear the pronoun him, meaning Muhammad, or his, meaning Muhammad, any of these things have attachment to Muhammad immediately after hearing any of these words. Is Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak alayhi Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak alayhi Muhammad. Allahumma salli. Allah, may Allah prayer and blessing be, uh, may Allah's prayer and peace and blessing be on our messenger Muhammad, on our prophet Muhammad. Really? Why? Because Muhammad taught them in the hadith. You pray on me one time, I pray on you ten times. Can you imagine now where there is a 1.7 billion Muslims in the world saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may Allah's prayer and Allah's peace be on Muhammad. Allah pray on each one of these 1.7 billion ten times. That is 1.7 trillion. How can Muhammad, who's dead in his bones, maybe his bones is rotten, dead in his tomb, 
buried in his tomb can pray. Does Muhammad hear the Muslim prayer? Is Muhammad equal to Allah? He hears a prayer and answers the prayer too. This is just an idea about many Muslim Pakistani, like this friend here, who will argue about Islam, defend Islam, and he does not know the word Salah, pray. And he pray in the Arabic language five times a day for years and years. Let's move on to the, the proof of our dear uh, Imam Muhammad in here uh, to prove that I translated wrong. Ready? Here we go. So, اتخذوا means they took ahbar, priests, ahbarahum, their priests, وَرُحْبَان and monks, وَرُحْبَانَهُمْ and their monks. Arbaban means as lords, min duna, which means besides or rather than Allah, God. Wa and Al Masih Abna Maryam, the Messiah, the son of Mary, and it continues on. So they took their priests and monks as lords besides God and the Messiah. Now here's the thing: look at the word priests. It has this uh, vowel mark on top of it, which is called a fatha, which is basically a mark uh, on top of the object of the verb took. So ahbara. Uh, that vowel mark on the top means that priests is the object of they took. They took what? They took their priests. And you see that above the monks, Waruhban, uh, also has that vowel mark uh, above, which means they took their priests and their monks as lords, min dunillahi, rather than Allah, rather than God. And when it comes to the word God, you can see that the vowel marking is below the word. That's called the kasra. There's a reason for that. So it's not the same as the two previous words, priests and monks, but it is uh, in the genitive case, and that mark is called a kasra. Then when it comes to al Masiha and the Messiah, you can see that that vowel mark is at the top again, indicating that the Messiah is the object of the verb took. So they took their priests and they took their monks and they took the Messiah as lords besides God. Wow. Don't you love a great fabrication for the Arabic grammar of the word of Allah and the Quran? They took their priests. It's rabbi, not priest. The word priest is kahna. He did not use the word kahna, but ahbar. Uh, monks, huh? as lords. Mindun. Not beside, without, without, not beside, without Allah and the Christ. The translation is very clear. He put it up there, but he adds the vows to it to make uh, his fabricated answer. Let me continue with uh, the verse of Allah here in the Quran in the right English translation, my translation. And they took their rabbis and their monks as lords rather than Allah and the Christ. Rather than Allah and the Christ. That is the true, accurate translation of the verb. Now, I want to share with you the vows which he's talking about. What is so amazing? What's so amazing? If you look for any Quran up to the third century, fourth century after Muhammad, any of the old Quran, you will see it written without vows and without dots. And that itself will bring us a chaos. Well, good luck. To figure out what Allah is saying in this verse. That's why we have many different readings to the verses of the Quran. That's why Muhammad created seven ahruf in the Quran. Seven ahruf and seven readings. As a matter of fact, somebody say ten different readings. But you see that letter here? That letter here could be, could be be, could be th, could be te, could be noon, could be yeah. If you put one dot below it, it's be. If you put three dot on the top, it's teh. If you put two dot on the top, it's teh. If you put one dot on the top, is noon. If you put one dot, two dot on the bottom, is yeah. As you see it here in this word, or as you see it here. Okay? That is one letter. B, like the letter B. Teh, like the letter C. Uh, S, teh, like the letter Tom, T for Tom. Noon, like the letter N for Nancy. And yeah, as a the, the letter Y for yellow, same letter. 
And in the original Quran, which our dear Muslim friend Demir maybe does not know about, it is written without any dots, which means, which means, if I say the letter, this letter here, ha, another example, if I put dot in the middle of it is a letter G, like the letter J in English, ha without dot, like in the middle is the letter H in English, ha is a letter, uh, the, like it was a dot and top here is a little higher is like, like what we call we we wrote we use for kh in english three different letters for the same word and depend what is written in the end of the sentence in the middle of the sentence uh, uh, in the beginning of the sentence or in the end of the sentence here is the three form for the same letter so one letter i can make out of it many words now let me give you an example of a word in the arabic language a word in the quran before they added to it years and years later the vowels and the dot i'm talking about now about the dot you see that word here uh it looks look like one circle two circle and then a bigger circle i can say that word here is bait which means a house i can see the word is bent which means a daughter i can use the word nabata which means grow like plant grow sabata means strong it became strong became solid yabisa means uh, dry out it became jab became dry out yes yes is and so on and on. you see what happened here in the same word where i put the dot it would give me too many different meaning too many different meaning here's uh, another word what is this word it could be anything it could be sap tap bat bab nap nabu I mean, so many words is the same. Depend where you put the the dots, and now when you add to it, uh, 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 is the the comma and fatha and school and shadda, which he's talking about, as in the case of uh, the letters above the words here. He sees this shadda. He sees this dhamma. He sees this fatha dhamma. He sees this. Uh, fatha and kasra when you add these now you pronounce the word completely different which will give you complete different meanings and once again when the quran was written was written without the dots and without the vowels when does he add his vowels i will share with you in a minute but let's continue with this video to see how great here in his interpretation uh, to the grammar of the arabic language to prove that i misinterpret the verse or mistranslate the verse to be accurately okay here we go listen to his continuation of his fabrication answer to prove that i was wrong in my translation now let me make that even clearer to you in just the english they took took we know is a verb they took what they took their priests so we have this uh vowel mark which indicates that it is the direct object of the verb took they took their priests and monks so monks also has this same vowel mark which is called a fatha again indicating that monks is also a direct object of the verb took they took their priests and monks as lords besides allah now allah doesn't have that fatha mark on top it has a kasra mark below which indicates that it is in the genitive case uh, due to the preposition besides and the messiah messiah again has that uh, fatha vowel mark on top of it which indicates that it too is the direct object of the verb took so they took what they took their priests and they took their monks and they took the messiah and they took jesus as lords besides Allah. They weren't supposed to do that. They weren't supposed to worship the priests or the monks or the rabbis or the Messiah. So how did this wonderful Muslim Imam who now is a scholar in the Arabic language concerning the vows, the Fatha and the Qasra explain to you that my translation is not accurate is he put a Fatha over the word priest. He put a Fatha above the word monk and he put a Fatha above the word uh, the Christ. And these are the uh, that what these are the three uh, people they took as Lord uh, uh, beside Allah. It's other than Allah, other than Allah. Wow. First of all, we have to understand that the Jewish people never worship their rabbis. 
never worship the rabbis. We do not have any cult within the Jewish faith that the rabbis were worshipped by the Jewish people. Okay, so this is a another internal error to prove to you that the Quran is not telling truth. Only Christians worship Jesus Christ. The Jewish nor the Christian never worship uh, any of the uh, uh, monks. The Christian never, not anywhere in the history of Christianity that the Christian worships a monk without Allah. Okay, they get rid of God and all they got this monks and the monk, you are our God right now. We're going to worship you monk so and so, monk so and so and they start worshiping them without Allah. That these, the teaching of this verse is a lie. The interpretation, what he's doing here is we don't know, it's another lie. Why? Because this Fatha and that Kasra and the Skun and the Dhamma and the Shadda did not exist. Neither in Muhammad days, neither in Abu Bakr Siddiq, the first Khalifa, neither in the, uh, 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 the in the life of uh, Osman, as the second Khalifa, neither in the life of Omar, in the first Khalifa, according, according to this site here, according to this site here, it was actually 65 years later, Six, five years later, I don't know if you can see that. I have to make it a little bigger so you can read it. Let's see, Sam, if we can make this bigger, 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 and a little bit more bigger. So here is a fact, my friends. They did not add these dots and these uh, vows for 65 years later, around uh, 65 years later I tried to make it I need to see where is the number exactly alright that is in that one source this was 707 uh, AD okay 688 uh, that's one guy he added the vows another one 707 here we go uh 65 let me um, I, I wish i can both circles on it but let me point it by my hand here okay in the 65 years after let's go to the left all the way 65 years 65 years after hijra that means literally uh 55 years after muhammad died so you have muhammad is dead uh abu Bakr is dead uh osman is dead and omar is dead now, uh, you cannot tell me that the Fatha and the Kasra and the Skun is the only evidence you can have to show me that Christ here actually is uh, belong uh, to the first world, which is the rabbis and the priests, and the Jewish and the Christian takes the three people as gods uh, other than Allah, or uh, instead of Allah. That grammar does not work at all. Why? Because that grammar did not exist in Muhammad days. And I got another uh, many evidence I'm going to share with you as we continue. So let's move on to the next video to see what else he's going to say. Listen carefully, please. Even if you're an American Christian and you don't know a single word of Arabic, you can just re-watch the video that I just made. Just so rewatch that part and you can see that due to the vowel markings in the original Arabic, it's absolutely clear that the Quran is saying that the Jews and Christians, the Christians specifically rather, they made a mistake by taking their rabbis and their priests and Jesus as lords or as authorities above and beyond the authority and sovereignty and supremacy of God Almighty. Oh, first he said the Jews and the Christian because all of the Quran said the Jews and the Christian. Now he said specifically the Christians. Once again, my dear uh, Mr. Muhammad, Imam Muhammad, uh, the Jews never took their rabbis as lords. The Christian never took their monks as lords. And the Christian from day one until the day they worship Jesus Christ alone without his mother or without any uh, rabbis or any monk or anybody else. Okay? So, uh, let's move on with the next video and we'll continue with his teaching. Now, there's only two possibilities for, for why Usama Dakdok did this. Either he doesn't have proper knowledge of Arabic, because despite being a native Arabic speaker, if he is one, if he really is from Egypt, colloquial Egyptian Arabic today 
is quite different in a number of respects from the standard classical Arabic of the Quran. When you're reading an Egyptian newspaper today, you're not dealing with these vowel markings, and so you don't have to deal with all of this. So either Osama Dak Dok is not proficient in Arabic, as he says, or he is purposely twisting the Quran. He's purposely misusing his knowledge of Arabic in order to pull a veil over his American Christian friends and just giving them any kind of trick that they can use when they are evangelizing to Muslims. So in similar words, there's two uh, options now for me. Number one, I do not know the Arabic language. Or number two, I'm deceiving the people of the West and gives them lies so they can use these lies to deceive the Muslims. Isn't that wonderful? We're going to deceive the Muslims to Christ. Like Muslims do in the West to deceive the American to Islam. Islam is love, Islam is peace. Islam is love, Islam is peace. And guess what? There's no love and peace in Islam. We don't do that. Deception is a work of Allah. Deception is a work of Muhammad. Deception is a work of Islam, not Christianity. We share the truth. If you don't believe it, we shake the dust off our feet and we move on. It's up to you. You, it's up to you to accept or reject Christianity. We don't force. We don't deceive people to Christianity. So, uh, if I would tell you, here is a verse in the Quran similar to the verse we're talking about. I'm taking it to a difference, and we're not we're not talking about Quran chapter nine verse thirty one. But I'm going to give you another verse. Which I show you that the problem of 931, it is all over the Quran in many other places. In Quran chapter 48, verses 8 and 9. Now, in our Salnaka Shahid and Sila. We read you the English. Okay? Quran chapter 48, verse 6. Surely we sent you. Who is you here? Muhammad. All Muslims can agree. As a witness and a giver of good news and a warner. So Allah is telling the, the, the Muslim believer that he sent Muhammad to witness for them, to give them good news and to warn them. Verse 9, listen carefully now. So is that you, who is you here? The Muslims, those who believe in Muhammad, may believe in Allah and in his messenger. Was they going to believe in who? Allah and his messenger and the singer and that you may and that you may help him and reverence him and praise him morning and evening who's him is him Allah or is him Muhammad you see when Muhammad makes a poetry of the Quran he's worried about the 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 beauty of the rhymes of the words not the message Here's another great example that what Allah said in 931 was exactly what Muhammad said. As by the way, he's using his own English translation. I did not put this translation on the word the board. We got it in the right order. As we're gonna read it again, if you want, if there's no problem, you go back and watch the video again and again. His own words in his own writing is perfect match to mine. He did not say uh, the rabbi and the monk and the Christ rather than Allah. He said the rabbi and the monk rather than Allah and Christ. That's his own translation. He's using it for you guys. And by the way, many other English translations use the same way. Some of them are lying, but the word Christ above. So it would take it away as the idea that worshiping Allah and Christ. So they're lying. But listen to this. So that you Muslims may believe in Allah and his messenger. Okay. And that you may help him. You're going to help Allah. Allah does not need help. And if your Allah needs help, find yourself a different Allah, okay? My God does not need my help. I need his help every hour, every minute, every second. Now, and reverence him. You're going to reverence Muhammad? And praise him. You're going to praise Muhammad? You mean you make Muhammad Allah? Now you worship Muhammad as God? That's a problem. Muhammad said words next to each other, make a beautiful poetry, and when you read it, it'll sound good with the reading of the Quran. Listen to this. So if you read it in the Arabic, Listen to this. 
Beautiful poetry. Now, do you know what I said? No. But when you get to see the English, oh, that you may believe in Allah and his messenger and that you may help him. Help Allah or Muhammad, only Allah knows. And reverence him, Allah or Muhammad, only Allah knows. And praise him, Allah or Muhammad, only Allah knows. But in reality, if you say these are Muhammad, now you make Muhammad Allah. If you make the him, this Allah, why you say it? help or give excuse? The word you answer is you give excuse or to help. Does Allah need excuse? Does Allah need help? That's a problem all over the Quran, my friend. Not just in Quran 9, 31. It's in many other places. As you read the Quran, you have no idea who's talking to who. Who is you? Who is he? Who is his? Who is him? Who is her? And Muslim scholar will give you different interpretation because obviously they disagree about what exactly is the right answer. Let's continue with our Muslim imam here. Usama Dak Talk is not the only one to try to use the Quran, chapter 9, verse 31, to try to trick Muslims into believing that the Quran is telling them to worship the Messiah or to worship Jesus. Christian Prince does the exact same thing. Christian Prince, of course, is a Christian debater on YouTube and Pal Talk. And Christian Prince's fanboys have uploaded and, and re uploaded videos of him using chapter 9, verse 31 of the Quran to try to make this point. So I'm going to ask Christian Prince's fanboys. If he is such an, if he's such a master of Arabic, if he knows Arabic so well, that's his main selling point. He says, look, I am an Arab. I'm Christian. I know Arabic. You American Christians don't. That's why I'm going to give you all the right arguments to use against Islam. So the question is, if he knows Arabic, how could he make such a major blunder? Major blunder? Your Quran is loaded with blunders. The problem is not a Christian prince or Usama Dakda. The problem is in Allah, how Allah puts the words in the Quran. As a matter of fact, I'm going to prove to you in the end of the study that Muhammad is telling me that Christ is the only true God. His own words. I don't know what he was smoking when he, or what he was drinking when he made, when he gave us that hadith sahih in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, and many other places. Muhammad assured us from his own words that Christ is God. Just use your imagination. When your prophet is telling me that God, Allah, is the Christ. Allah is not the Antichrist, but Allah is the Christ. Okay? So, uh, it's not the problem is not in Christian prince. The problem is not in Islam. The problem is in Islam, in the Quran, in Allah, and in Muhammad. Let's move on. And if you're still unconvinced, because I know that many of you American evangelical Christians, you've been raised on a steady diet for the past 15 years of Muslims are evil, Muslims are liars, Muslims are told. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you trying to tell me Muslim believers are not evil? Are you trying to tell me Muslim believers are not liars? Are you trying to tell me Muslim believers are not a follower of a savage cult? Maybe you need to read the Quran, my friend. You cannot find love or peace in any unabrogated verses in the Quran. The entire Quran is built on lies. Your Muhammad taught you to lie. It is lawful for you to lie to your wives, to your enemies, and to your friends. That's everybody, my friend. Allah taught you in the Quran it's okay to lie and deceive the West by practicing taqiyya. Or deceive the West by raising your hand and giving an oath to give allegiance to their countries. If you're living in Canada or you're living in America, you give an oath to, but if you don't mean it in your heart, Allah will not hold you responsible for it. Allah thought it's okay to deny Islam. As Muhammad himself assured his Muslim wonderful believers whose heart is full of faith, if you mean the emphasis again, deny me again, again, again. That is Islam. As for the hatred of Islam, it's all over the Quran. We got over 300 verses in the Quran. Nothing but hate, jihad, war, tyranny, behead, cut hand and feet from opposite side, cut fingers, cut toes, kill. It's all over your Quran, my friends. Where, where do you live? Maybe you really never read the Quran in your life. Or maybe you're practicing taqiyya again. Oh, you are not hateful. Islam is love. Islam is peace. And Christian prince and Yusama Dakdok and Sam Shimon and, and all these people, David Wood and others, are just lying to the West because the West are super stupid. They cannot read your own Quran, which you printed and gave it to them for free all over this country. There's not one Quran in all these English translations teach love and peace to non-Muslim. Not one Quran. My translation is bad. Good. How about all the others are, are not are not good either? How about Arabic? Is Arabic a bad one too? 
lie, they're deceitful. If you don't want to believe me, that's fine. How about asking one of your Arabic friends, what do these signs mean? Why is there a vowel mark above priests? Why is there a vowel mark above monks? And why is there that vowel mark, the fatha, above Christ? And why is it that Allah is different? Why is it that with Allah, the vowel mark is underneath the word Allah, which indicates that that word is in the genitive case due to the preposition min duna or besides rather than. So explain these vowel marks to me. This is a question you should ask of your Arabic Christian friends. Tell them, hey, you're Arabs, you understand Arabic, we don't. So please explain to us what do these vowel marks mean? What was that Canadian brother on that YouTube channel? What was he talking about? Yeah, this Canadian brother is so ignorant of the fact that the vowels and the dots were added to the Quran literally. Let me make it big again. Here we go. We'll make it big again. Okay, see, 65 years after Hijrah, 65 years after Hijrah, and that is the youngest age. Because in reality, we have many Qurans in the 300, in the 400, and it still does not have the dots on the vowels. So how in the world you can tell me that Muhammad really meant it like that when he did not put any vows? And vows means nothing. What you miss is the word and. And is more important than wa than the vows. Because you know what? The word wow is in the original Quran you're reading. If it is Osmani Quran or any other uh, original, uh, not original, the copies you have of the original. Wa and. So we have two things. Rabbi and priest. So the Jews and the Christians worship the rabbi and the priest rather than instead of Christ and. Allah and Christ, where is there? The vow was not there. So you got two versus two. They worship rabbi and priest instead of they worship Allah and Christ. And between Allah and Christ exists, but the vow did not exist. If you don't know that, I'm glad we have the opportunity to teach you about this very important fact. You cannot build your doctrine on the vows because the vow did not exist in the first few hundred years of Islam to many of the Muslims around the world. Let's continue. One more video from our dear friend here. Let me tell you, American Christians, something. More than you have to fear us, more than you should fear us Muslims, you should fear your friends because it's your friends that can drag you to hell. And on the day of judgment, you're going to be pointing at people like Christian Prince and Osama Dakdok saying, this is what you told us the Quran said. That's why we believed it. And as the Quran indicates, they'll turn back to you and say, we didn't force you to follow us. We didn't force you to believe anything that we said. We didn't force you to believe anything that we wrote. We didn't tell you to unquestioningly follow us. We didn't tell you to not have any skepticism or question what we're telling you. So I'm telling you while you have the chance, question what people like Christian Prince are telling you and question what people like Osama Dakdog are telling you. Just because they are Arab Christians doesn't mean that they know Arabic better than Arabic Muslims. And in many cases, they are purposely twisting the meanings of the Quran in order to pull a veil over your eyes. The very same accusation that they make against Muslims. Wow. Don't fear other Muslims who were taught in the Quran to behead you. To kill your men and to rape your wives and your daughters. Don't fear us. Don't fear us. Notice now, 84% of the Muslim, I'm sorry, 84% of the young girls who were raped in England, for example, are raped by two something percent, two percent or so of the Muslim Pakistani, like him, and Muslim Bangladeshi, like him. Don't fear those who kill and rape your daughter, kill your men and rape your daughters. Don't fear those who believe in the word of Allah and the Quran, but fear the Christians like Christian Prince. And he have a picture of Christian Prince like Satan, you know, on the right side. I'm glad I got a nice picture on the left side. Nice looking guy, you know, as with my logo behind me. But Christian Prince, he does not have a picture from so he put a Satan for him. I want uh, CP to answer this problem. Do you look like that Satan CP? Uh, you need to answer that, man. I don't know if that's your picture or he just made it up. But anyway, so don't fear the Christians who love the Muslims. Oh, sorry. Don't fear the Muslims who hate the Christians, but fear the Christians who love the Muslims. Don't fear the Muslims of America and the Muslims of Canada, but hate the Christians of Egypt because they're lying to you. And they're going to tell you in the deep judgment. We do not know. We did not ask you to follow us. Follow what? Follow what, my friends?
follow a child molester, a sex offender, a woman either, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, or follow the truth of the word of God in the Bible. I don't ask anybody to follow me. That verse is what's written in your Quran. That's exactly how your scholars wrote it in English in many other translations, as you yourself used it in the right translation. Now, some lied, some twist them around, some put Christ before the word of Allah to fix the problem, but it's a problem in the Quran, not, as I said, not just in that verse, but in any, many other verses. So let's move on to another very important fact about, uh, well, let's get one more verse, and then I'll get you to the fact of the change which Osman did to the Quran. Okay, here we go. And for me, the funny thing is that, as the Quran says, falsehood cannot approach it, not from in front of it, not from behind it. You can't, falsehood cannot touch the Quran. Falsehood can never touch the Quran. Lies can never touch the Quran. Changes will never come near the Quran. The Quran is perfect. The Quran is holy. Since it was written in the heavens before it came to earth to Muhammad, until today is perfect, pure Arabic, very easy to understand. Yeah. Maybe we should have a debate with this guy on the topic alone. Forget about 931. That's the Quran to understand the Quran. Here's some facts about the Quran. And uh, let me uh, play this one for you. We'll see if we have the sound bite. So, sake of time, here we go. Watch this. Nope, we can't. So, we're going to go here and say update. Hopefully, this will fix it. Let's see it if it will play right now. Nope, it's okay. I just have to read it for you. A man recite a passage of the Quran in the presence of Omar. Omar is the third leader after Muhammad. Muhammad died. Abu Bakr after Abu Bakr is Omar. Okay? Who corrected him? The man, upset, claimed to have recite for the Prophet, and he did not correct him. So what we have here? A man in the mosque, imagine with me, sitting in the mosque and reciting the Quran. You see. Bismillah Rahman Rahim La 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 And Omar said, whoa, 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 stop, stop. You're reading the wrong words. That's not how Allah, Messenger Muhammad, gave me these verses. You're wrong. He said, how dare are you to correct me, Omar? I just recited the same passage before Muhammad and he did not correct me. Who do you think you are? He said, oh, let's go to Muhammad. Okay, so now. He was going to go to Muhammad. They carried their dispute to Muhammad. The prophet endorsed the man's claim. Muhammad then explained all the modes of recite, reciting are correct as long as you do not turn a statement on mercy into one on wrath or vice versa. Oh, so Muhammad said that man recitation of the Quran was perfect, correct, and all my recitation of the Quran are perfect, correct. So how many Quran do we have so far, my dear Muslim friends? Two Qurans. Well, hold your horses. Hold your horses. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. Let's move on to the next one here. Let's see what we have here. Never mind. Muhammad disclosed that two angels had came to him. One said, recite the Quran in one form. And the other advised Muhammad to ask for more than that. That was repeated several times until finally the first angel said, very well, recite it in seven forms. Whoa, whoa, my dear Muslim Pakistani. Your Quran was written actually in seven forms, seven different writings, seven different words, and not, not that. A dialect as somebody say no different wording you told us a minute ago the quran never been touched by any falsehood no change no lie perfect word of allah since it was written 1400 years ago until today as a matter of fact before it was before creation the word of allah is the same okay now the prophet said each of the forms is grace giving protecting as lo so long as you don't terminate a punishment verse on a uh, on a, a expression of mercy or vice versa. Don't you dare change the words or uh, sentence from a punishment to a blessing or from blessing to punishment is fine. How many Quran do we have so far? Seven. Seven Quran. So if I go right now to any Muslim library, I find seven Quran, the one Muhammad received from Allah through angel Jibreel and the other angel, which we do not know what is his name. But who cares? Let's go. Let's move on.
this 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 very variation this variation caused strife among early muslims dispute arose about who had the, the superior version of the quran in response khalifa osman now forget about omar omar is not in the picture now osman is in the picture osman did what order the creation of a single quran and had all other copies burned your khalifa osman who was by the way died before the ad the vows you're talking about he died before the ad the vows you're talking about he made one quran osmani quran and that osmani quran is the only quran available and he burned all other quran by the way we have so far enough evidence from uh, uh, scientists uh, from uh, uh, archaeologists, uh, from uh, scholars, not the Muslim scholars, real scholars, that we actually have, I don't know, 40 Qurans, and they're all different. They're not the same. Many of them, without the vows, you're talking about the Fatha and the Kasra, to create a, 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 a way out for how Allah asked the people to worship Him and Christ. This is a problem, my friends. Your Quran has been changed so many times, and the evidence is what we have to do. As a matter of fact, we now know for sure that the Quran we have, which they call Osmani Quran, was written at least 150 years after Hijra. That means about 120 years after Osman died. Years and years and years later. We do not have original manuscript of the Quran. We do not have one Quran, but many more, 40-some uh, Qurans. There are plenty of contradiction and plenty of differences and plenty of chaos in this manuscript. As a matter of fact, when I read your own scholar, if I go to Quran, chapter 33, Surah Al-Ahzab, okay? If I go to Quran, chapter 33, and I, when I look how many verses, there are 73 verses there. And Muslim will tell me, will tell me that that chapter used to be as big as 200 verses. Another chapter was 200 verses. Hello? 79 verses. 120, uh, I don't know, 120 plus verses are missing from one chapter. And the Quran never by touched by any uh, falsehood. No lies ever were added or taken away from the Quran. For heaven's sake, if you study the Quran and you compare it to the Bible, you find one fact that Muhammad literally lived to practice what is written in the book of revelation in the last passage where is he added to the bible and he took away from the bible that is your quran a corrupt counterfeit to the bible adding and taking away so many of the information from the true account of the bible that's your quran you want to do a debate on that give me a call send me an email i'd love to debate you on that now uh one of the amazing things i'm not going to waste too much time because we're out of time in the law canon Surely Allah was. And I'm going to give you just a couple examples here for the sake of time. If you go to chapter 4, verse 34, it says, Surely Allah was higher big. Was. Allah was? You mean he's no longer higher? He's no longer big? But if you compare to Quran 22, 62, surely Allah is, is the higher the big. But if you read the English translation of so-called Muslim scholars, they will not put was, but they put the word is. But in Arabic, in Allah, kana, kana means was. In Allah, huwa, is. Was, is. In, for sure, certainly. Why your scholars lie and change was to is when they translate the Quran? I don't do that. I don't do that. I give you the accurate translation. Here's another one. 4, 121, uh, 129. So surely Allah was forgiven, merciful. Was, surely he was. You mean Allah is no longer uh, merciful? Allah is no longer for, uh, forgiving? Ooh, but in Quran 5, 39, surely Allah is forgiving merciful. Look at the Arabic. In Allah kana was. In Allah kana was. Muqabil, he's the opposite. In Allah ghafoor and rahim. In Allah ghafoor, no kana. He is. So we have a problem. Is Allah was or is? Why your translator lie in their English translation and both was to is? <laughs> I have struggled with many of my uh, editors because they want to change was to is. I said, no, 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 no. You cannot take was out. Keep it was. Why? Because that's what's written in the Quran. The problem is not in you, Sam Adakdok, the translator, or, or, uh, or Christian prince, or any of us who expose the falsehood of the Quran. Allah was. You know, if Allah was, that means he's changed. If Allah changed, that means Allah is not God. You mean, 
his entire Quran goodbye. And how many verses we have like that? Look, here we go. One more, one more, one more, one more, one more, one more. Allah was, Allah was. Really? Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. There are plenty of was. I just picked up nine verses here for you. Uh, actually, 18 or some of them contradict each other, of course. You see in the Quran, Allah was, and in the same time, Allah is. Who changed these? Did I change the Quran in the Arabic language about Kana and save Inna? For sure, for certain was, or he is. See, the Quran has been touched with many corruption because it is originally, written originally with corruption because Allah can never, ever, ever be was because. If Allah is God, he must be is. If you say Allah was, that means Allah is not God. And that is the truth we know about your Quran. Now, some of the amazing things, and I'm almost done, guys. I'm almost done. I have only like seven more slides. For example, if you read in Quran chapter 33, verse 17, that tells Allah, not only Allah was, Allah does not know what's coming in the future. It says, and indeed, we have honored the children of Adam. We have carried them on the land of and the sea in the land you ride the camels or ride the, the donkey the sea and the ships why not allah added and in the air oh because allah does not know that man will invent the airplane if allah knows the future not only he was he say was if you know the future he should add and in the air but obviously that you know there's no miracle in the Quran. i mean for heaven's sake muhammad sees a ship in the water Muhammad sees the people ride the camel walking on foot. Does this is this really a miracle to ride this verse in the Quran? Oh, how great Allah is! The rain comes from heaven, and when the rain comes, it the earth grow. Oh, plants grow. We got fruit, and the fruit have different tastes. Are you kidding me? Seven, eight years old kid can figure this out. You don't need to be a prophet to figure out the rain causes the fruit to grow and have different tastes. Have you ever ate fruit before? And that's amazing. Muhammad forgot to mention so many fruit. He only mentions the olives and the fig. And uh, and the date. Besides that, oh no, there is no other fruit grow up in Saudi Arabia. But anyway, now let's move uh, to another verse, Quran chapter six, uh, verse ninety-seven. And he is who has made the stars for you, so that you may be guided by it in the darkness and, uh, of the shore and the sea. Indeed, we expound uh, on the verses for people to who know. Wow, Muhammad figured out. That you can look at the star, you can look at the star and know how to travel at night. Who you can travel with the star, it's really good guidance. You know who did that? The Magites. How long ago? Hundreds of years before Christ, thousands of years before Muhammad. Be able to study the stars for years. You know what Allah is missing here? He should say, Hmm, and we will guide the men with the GPS. Because guess what? Today, when I travel, my friends. I never use the stars. I, as a matter of fact, I never know how to use the stars. If I look at the star, people say, see the big dipper? See the small dipper? I said, I have, I can't see what you're talking about. But guess what? My GPS worked great. I don't need Allah. I don't need the stars. I just need my GPS. And I can go by my GPS anywhere around the world. I use my GPS in Europe. I use my GPS in Canada. I use my GPS in America. I use my GPS in Africa. I use my GPS in Indonesia. I can use my GPS all over the world. You know why? Because man invented the uh, the uh, the system which we buy it, we can drive. It doesn't matter if it's cloudy or not. Because trust me, when it's cloudy, Muslims do not even know how to start the fasting Ramadan because they cannot see the moon, the new moon, to start Ramadan. But by the GPS, I can go anywhere without any problem. So Allah did not know the future. Okay. Uh, here's another huge error in the Quran. Okay, sure, uh, chapter 16 and nah, the B and verse 66. It says, And surely there is a lesson for you in the livestock. Hmm, we're gonna learn something from the cows. Okay, Muhammad, I'm ready. Teach me what can I learn about the cows and the goats? Okay, here we go. We gave you drink from what is in their bellies, drink from what is in their bellies. Men batnohum, we drink from their bellies. Well, listen to this, listen to this, okay? Between ex <laughs> excretions and blood. Z the, the, what's in the guts here, you know, the poop, uh, the food after you chew it, go into the excretions and blood. What? Pure milk. Wow. Is agreeable to the drinkers. Wow. 
That's a great science of Allah. I never knows that we got milk from what's inside the bellies and milk. No, my friends. Pure milk does not come from the belly of the cows or the sheep or the camel. It comes from their breast. And that has nothing to do with the blood, has nothing to do with the excretions inside their belly. What do you call that, my dear Muslim friends? That's corruption. That's nonsense. And I can go on and on for hours to share with you many of these areas. But anyway, here we go. Last video for our dear Muslim friend here. And uh, we will close here in a minute. The very same verse 931, which some of these Christian evangelicals are misquoting, that very same verse goes on to say, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا إِلَاهًا وَاحِدًا لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ سُبْحَانَهُ عَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ And they were not commanded except to worship one God. There is no God other than Him. Far exalted is He above anything that they falsely attribute to Him. So the very same verse, that very same verse continues on to say that there is only one God. They were only ordered to worship one God. They were only commanded to worship one God. Not three. There aren't three persons up there. There's not a committee of three persons or a God composed of three persons up there. There's only one God. That's what the Quran clearly teaches. That is what the Old Testament clearly teaches. And that is what Jesus, peace be upon him, clearly taught. Well, the Old Testament clearly teach of one God, and that God is plural, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As we read about God the Father, God the Word, and God the Holy Spirit, which you know nothing about. The New Testament, Jesus taught us, as we believe him to be God Almighty who came in the flesh. He is the word of God, the eternal word of God, who became flesh. The Holy Spirit is all over the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. But you do not know, because you just follow Muhammad, who taught you there's only one absolute, absolute, summon, like a piece of brick, God. He does not have any empty, he does not eat, does not drink. That's your Allah. By the way, as we go through the Quran, you find that Allah have a, have a leg, he have a hand, he have eyes, he have ear, he have soul. We, we, we just learned about that today. So I don't know what, what is your God is, but uh, here's the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the change in the Quran. In Quran, chapter 29, verse 46, the same Quran which said there's only one God. Listen to this. And do not dispute with the people of the book except with what is good, except to those who have done injustice among them and say, we believe in what has been sent down to us and has sent down to you. Our God and your God is one. And we are Muslims to him. Your Quran said that your God and my God is one. But guess what? Before Muhammad was a gleam in his father's eye, for 600 years, the Christians worshipped the triune God, the Father and Son of the Spirit. And not here, Muhammad is not talking about in the future. He's talking to the Christian who live with them. Don't dispute with those Christian you live with right now. And not one of the Christian who live in Muhammad days or the previous 600 years believe in worshiping God the Father and God the Mother or God the Son or worship God the Mother and God the Son without God the Father. That's not our Trinity. But your Quran right now, Quran chapter 29 verse 46 assured me that your God and the God whom the Christian worship in Muhammad days in his present time, 1400 years ago, is one. Which means you worship the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit because I'm sorry. No existence of any Christians huh, who believe in the God you reject in your Quran, which we see here in the following verse, Quran chapter 5, verse 116. And when Allah said, O Isa, son of Mary, did you say to the people, take me and my other as two gods other than Allah? So how many gods do we have now? Two gods. Your Quran told me a minute ago, that is in Quran chapter 29, verse 46, there's one God, which you and I worship. Now your God is also telling me in your Quran chapter 5 and verse 116 that there are two gods. Who are these two gods? Isa and his mama. Mary. Okay, let's move on to the third contradiction in your Quran. Your Quran chapter 4, verse 171 said what? 
So believe in Allah and his messenger and do not say three. How many God do we have here? Three. And I dare and I challenge any Muslim to name for me the three gods which we Christian worship. You know what they're going to tell you? The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hello? That's not what the Quran says. The Quran rejects the worship of the Father and the Mother and the Son. Or the Father and the, the Mother and the Son without the Father. Minduni. Goodbye, Allah. We're going to worship just Jesus and Mary. Why? Why you're in chaos? Why you're in confusion? You know why? Because you follow a chaos book. Because you follow a confused Muhammad, a confused prophet. And here's what Muhammad said. And I make it big so we can close with this. Here we can close with this. We're talking about the Antichrist, my dear friends, the Antichrist. At the jail, Muhammad tell him, Allah is not hidden from you. He is not one eye. In reality, in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, everywhere, Muhammad is telling us about in the end of time, there will come one with one eye because one eye is booked out, you know, broken eye. And he said, he will say that he is the Christ. And when that Christ comes and he says that he is the Christ, you know, that's not the true Christ. This is Al Dajjal, the false prophet, the false Christ, the Antichrist. Why? Because your Lord, <laughs> listen carefully, does not have. One eye. Our Allah, our God, have two eyes. Christ, the real Christ, have two eyes because also in Islam, Christ, the real Christ, with the two eyes, the true God, the true Lord, will come back to this world. And I know what Muhammad taught you, Muslim friends. He will break the cross, kill all the Christian. He will kill the pig, kill all the Jews. He'll be a good Muslim. He'll have four wives. And he worships the Muslim way. To be a real Muslim. That is who? The real, the real Christ. Nonsense. Nonsense. Take sex out of Islam and out of Muhammad. There's nothing left for Muslims. He enticed you men with sex in the early days and until today you're still enticed by sex. Why Muslim commit suicide for Allah? To get the 72 version. Even when Jesus comes back, he'll have sex. Not with one woman, but four. Wow. Makes sense, isn't it? But the important in that in that hadith, which is correct hadith by Bukhari, Sahih Al Bukhari, the correct hadith of Bukhari, seven four. I can read my eyes. This is under the color seven hadith number seven thousand four hundred oh seven seven four oh seven. Go check it out, my dear Muslim friends. The real Christ is Allah. The real Christ is Lord, because Allah have two eyes, but the fake Christ. One eye, that's not the right guy. Don't follow him. God is good. Praise God. Brother Sam, I'm done, brother. I'm done. I was thinking, bro, okay, so you're done with the slide? I was thinking you need another five hours. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, make it short. I make it short just for you, my buddy. No, no, it's beautiful, actually. Glory to Jesus Christ. Praise the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, our trying God. Glory to Jesus, the Father, Son. We had over 350 people. That's good. Good crowd. But now, before we wrap it up, I just want to confirm what you've been saying about chapter 9, verse 31. Guys, here's an article. I had written an article on this. I wrote an artic article on and chapter And you never shared it with me. Thanks a lot, yeah, well, Sam. If you write an article, article, why don't you send it to me? Maybe make me look a little bitter. Osama. You already yeah. spoke three hours. Do you want to give me a chance for a minute? Or oh, oh, I'm sorry, brother. Go for it. All right, you need my attention? I'll give you attention. Here, I want. Hey, Timmy. I got my attention. No, hold on. Timmy. Timmy. He needs more time to speak. We'll give you attention later. Hey, do you, do you know? You I, keep I, come on. Come on. That's okay. That's okay, brother. No, no. If you want, go ahead. Can talk over me. It's okay, brother. I love you. I said, too. love you, too. All right. Here's the article that I've been trying to get uh, share with you for the past 10 minutes. Here it is. This article, chapter 9, verse 31, I have an article on chapter 9, verse 31, and the reason why I'm giving you the link is, number one, so you can learn the argument, chapter 9, verse 31, does say that you should have no lords besides Allah and the Messiah, contrary to this wicked deceiver, Sadat, this repulsive jihadi, 
who pretends to be peaceful, but he's full of the venom of his father, the devil, Muhammad's true father. May the Lord Jesus silence him, and I pray he accepts my debate challenge. Now, I'm going to read to you the following citation, which is in the article. Guys, save the link. I'll put it in the description box. Here, let me again give you the link one more time. Here it is, one more time. This comes from a book titled Abdul Jabbar, Critique of Christian Origins, a parallel English Arabic text edited, translated, and annotated by Gabriel Sayed Reynolds and Samir Khalil Samir. If you guys don't know who these guys are, they're considered some of the <clears throat> top scholars of the Quran. Now, they happen to be Christian, but they are in academia. They actually interact with scholars. They're bona fide scholars with bona fide degrees. So they're not, quote unquote, Christian missionaries and evangelicals. Gabriel uh, Sayed or Sayed Reynolds and Samir Khalil Samir. This is what they say. Okay. This is what they say in pages <clears throat> 21 to 22, but it's in Roman numerals. This is an introduction to their translation. Let me read this carefully so you know that Usama is not lying, Christian Prince is not lying, and Lord Jesus willing, next Friday I'm bringing Rob Christian, another Christian who speaks Arabic, to confirm what Usama said, what Christian Prince has been saying. Now here are two bona fide scholars, recognized as scholars in academia. I want you to see what they say about chapter 9, verse 31. However, the Quran also repeatedly has Jesus announced, that he was sent by God to confirm the law to the Israelites, to insist on God's transcendence, to reject worship of him as gods, him and his mother as gods, and in one place to announce a messenger to come after him. Hence, it seems that the Quran is rejecting Christian claims about Jesus. And indeed, the Quran implies that the people of the book, here presumably Christians are intended, belittle God with their statements about Christ. Elsewhere, chapter 9, verse 30, Christians are reprimanded for calling Christ the Son of God. And yet, direct quote, guys, and yet in the very next verse, chapter 9, verse 31, the Quran seems to imply that Christians and Jews err in considering monks and rabbis as lords instead of God and Christ. Did you catch it? The Quran seems to imply that the mistake of the Jews and the Christians is that taking rabbis and monks as lords instead of God and Christ. So they're telling you, if you just read the Arabic, it is affirming God and Christ are the Lord that people need to submit to. But they do say this in their footnote. In their footnote. Watch here. I just want to make sure you get it. Note, however, that the text is vocalized with today, today, today's Quran with these vowel markings vocalized with Christ and the accusative so that Christ is grouped with monks and rabbis in this verse. So understand what they're saying. They're telling you Islam is right. If you read the skeletal, skeletal text, the consonantal text of the Quran, before the vowel markings were added, clearly God and Christ are joined together as the Lord that people are to look to. It's when you add the vowel markings, which Muslims did later on, that changes the plain reading of the Arabic consonantal text so that Jesus is no longer grouped with Allah, but with the rabbis and the monks, which means later Muslims did a better job and improved on the language of Allah because they're telling us Allah meant to say one thing. He came out saying it wrongly, and they helped Allah and corrected his grammar. Allahu Akbar, Usama. Amen and amen and amen. You got it? So that I wanted to give him that article. Pretty and neat. Even though I wanted to open up Q&A, the, the problem is we have a Muslim customer, Osama. So when I end with you, I have a Muslim customer who's already shaking in his boots and telling me, give me five minutes to speak. We're going to go live, guys. Lord Jesus, right when I end this session, I'm going live with John Doe, a fake coward who won't even use his real name because he's ashamed of Allah and his messenger. So he uses the fake name. So Lord Jesus willing, right when I end this, within 20 minutes we go live. So come back and invite more people. Save that article. I have another article for you. And then I'm going to let Osama make some concluding remarks. But I just want to give him these links. I just posted this article today. More proof, Osama. More proof hmm. that Allah worships like Muslims. You know why, Osama? Why? Not only do we know Allah prays and you know the Arabic, but in the hadith, 
in the Hadith of Tirmidhi, and it's also found in Mishqat al-Masabih. It says that a thousand years before Allah created the heavens and the earth, Osama, a thousand years before he created the heavens and the earth, Allah recited Taha Yasin. Two chapters from Allah was reciting it. And so in this post, Osama and everyone else, here it is in the comment section. I show from the Quran and the Hadith that an act of worship, an act of worship. In fact, one Hadith says the best act of worship is to recite the Quran. So Allah was reciting the Quran to himself before creation as an act of worship. So Allah is worshiping. Allahu Akbar, Usama. Allah himself. Akbar. He's worshiping himself. Exactly. Now, finally, let me give you this link. And then, Usama, you can wrap it up, make some final comments. Let me just give him this link. Yesterday, I did a session with Al Fadi on Sir International, confirming some things that Usama said. We were talking about Adam, Surah Al-Baqarah, Iblis, Satan, Angels worshiping Adam, at least refusing to do so, and the implications of it. Make sure to watch that video and study the arguments because we're giving you meat for the glory of Jesus. And with that said, if you believe Usama blessed you and gave you meat, number one, pray hard for his ministry. Pray for his family, his mm -hmm. wife and son. Number two, pray for more doors to open where God uses them mightily. Number three, we're going to put the links in the description box. Consider supporting him financially because he is one of the brothers. There's a handful of brothers I want to see fully supported to do ministry because God has called them to full-time ministry. We need to make sure he's fully supported. We need to make sure we have regular people supporting him. So if you believe this man is blessed of the Lord to do ministry, consider prayerfully sacrificing things you don't need. There are a lot of things we don't need. We need to get rid of them so have more money to support more quality people doing quality work. He's one of them. Now, glory to Jesus. Jay Smith is fully funded. David Wood is fully funded. So they'll tell you we're fully funded. Help those who are not funded yet fully. He's one of them that needs full funding. He won't tell you. I will tell you. So if you believe God has called them to ministry, step it up, brethren. Sacrifice things you don't need. Eat less. You know, get rid of the cable. Whatever you need to have a few extra dollars because when you contribute to the work of Osama and others that are men and women of integrity, you know that you're sharing in their ministry. And so the harvest that they sow or reap, you're part of it because God is going to work through you to <clears throat> enable them to either sow and someone else reaps or reap what is sown. You share in that blessing and Jesus is worthy. So with that said, Osama, some final concluding remarks. And if you want it in prayer, after he's done, within 20 minutes, we go live. So get my brother. I believe our dear Muslim friends are deceived by so many lies. And some of them are deceiver. It's hard for me to figure out who's deceived and who's deceiver. But the truth is this. The Quran cannot be the word of God. Muhammad cannot be a prophet. His life does not prove of him to be a decent man to carry any message to any person. So if we think that Christianity is not true, even though it exists for 600 years, as it is written in the New Testament pages, which is a fulfillment of all the prophecies which were written in the Old Testament. Now, 600 years later, a man who is sadly to say a sinful, wicked, evil man come to the world to say, I am the final prophet. I am the final messenger. And you do not do what? Two things. Believe Jesus is God. Or believe in the salvation which he came to offer for us on our behalf on the cross. Well, I'm sorry. If Jesus is not God and he did not die on the cross and he ever rose from the dead, what do we have in Christianity? Nothing. As a matter of fact, everything Muhammad copied from the Bible in the Quran is also nothing. Because not only the Quran contradicts the Bible, the Quran contradicts the Quran. There are plenty of errors in the Quran. Don't believe the assumption which Muslims give in the West. That the Quran is perfect, pure Arabic, no error, no, never been touched by any evil, any lies. Islam is love, Islam is peace. Even you, my dear Muslim friends, don't keep repeating these lies to convince yourself and convince your children and grandchildren of the same lies. It's time to break the chain. It's broken to set yourself free. So is your children or your grandchildren. I'm not asking you to denounce Islam. I'm asking you to examine Islam. I'm not challenging you to leave Muhammad. No, study Muhammad. Learn about Muhammad. 
the more you know about Islam, the know for sure you will leave Islam. This is the two reasons why Muslims leave Islam because they study the Quran and because you know Muhammad. Sadly, in the West, <laughs> Americans and the West are becoming Muslim because they know nothing about Islam and they know nothing about Muhammad, they know nothing about the Quran. And the same with even our dear friend here from Pakistan. Plenty of Muslims are Muslims because simply they do not know Islam and they did not have the courage and the boldness to examine, to study, to search. So my challenge for you is this. You watch this presentation again, couple, three times, take notes. Hey, drag me a mail. Say, Usama, you are wrong about this. You're wrong about that. Why don't you email me, Usama as a straightway.org. That is Usama as a straightway.org. And this dear brother from Canada, I believe he's from Canada. Uh, he wanted to debate me on the topic. Here's the answer, my friend. I don't have time to debate people who do not know their Islam. So learn Islam, learn Arabic, become real good Muslim so you can leave Islam. And Christ is Lord, and to him the glory and honor from now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, bless you, Osama, your ministry. You guys, pray, support him. Pray for us, for our support, our children, our families. The Lord Jesus, keep us pure and holy, in love with him and healthy. And which reminds me, by the way, one of my mods, a dear brother in Jesus Christ, Sargandi, he just contacted me. His brother's got COVID-19, so he's going to check himself. So, guys, please pray for my mod, Sargandi. Pray the Lord Jesus keeps his brother healthy and heal him of any harmful effects from COVID. Keep all that family healthy from COVID. And we were actually with each other last night, so he was in contact with many brothers and sisters in the Bible study. Pray that the Lord Jesus protects all of us from COVID, keeps us healthy from it, keeps us safe from its harms and pray for speedy recovery for Sargon's family in Jesus name. He needs your prayers and mm -hmm. prophet Google. You have it too. Pray for prophet Google. man. Everyone's getting COVID Lord Jesus, your will be done. We trust in you and by your blood, by your wounds, we are healed. Give us the health we need to serve you and the holiness to light your heart. We love you. Son of God in Jesus name. Amen. amen. 20 minutes from now. Amen. I'm going live with this punk kid, this clown to put him in his place, put his God and prophet in his place. So come back. Lord bless you. 20 minutes. Don't go anywhere. Jesus is Lord.